the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Bring your kiddies, bring your wife. Guaranteed to have the time of your life because the Mets are really sucking the ball. Knocking those home runs over the wall. East side, west side. Everybody's coming down to meet the M-E-T-S Mets of New York Town. Oh, the butcher and the baker and the people on the streets. Where do they go? To meet the Mets. Oh, they're hollering and cheering and they're jumping in their seats. Where do they go? And we are live, Mets and baseball fans. Thank you all so much to everyone chiming in for a special live stream. And we're going to be going really up until the Mets game tonight, as long as we get good viewership. And I know we will. So we'll be discussing all the rumors, all the latest reports that's going on with the New York Mets and the players there showing interested in uh, lean up to the MLB trade deadline this Friday. That will be right around 4 p.m. Eastern time. So really, really excited for today's stream. We have a lot to discuss and some fairly breaking news just came out at the time of going live here. But before I say anything, before I go any forward whatsoever, I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate you guys. Robert, Silver, Gavin, Ryan, Dave, my good friend. How are you, Dave Kaplowitz? Dominic, another great friend as well, great member on the channel. Um, today, uh, you officially retired. Congratulations to you, Dominic. Guys, everyone wish Dominic a very happy retirement. A congratulations to you, my friend. I'm very happy for you. Um, let's see, Zach, Bags, Andrew, Jose, and Sandy, great member on the channel. Greg, Quinn, Gerald, a great member. Uh, Conflicto, Robert, all you guys. Joe, thank you all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate you guys. Again, I know this is going to be a really, really entertaining stream. We have a lot to talk about. So, like I said, we're going to really be breaking down one by one all the players the Mets have either shown interest in, it showed interest in, or players that very well could be connected to the Mets. They haven't been already. Blacklist Outdoors, how are you? Uh, so, yeah, uh, let me just start by announcing the breaking news, if you will, because I think this is going to take up a decent portion of today's stream. Um, and it, uh, it does come with some conflict, given the fact of who reported this, uh, like everything else. So, again, I'm not going to say bet, bet the farm on this or anything. But according to Michael Mayer, who's executive for Mets Marais, who I've referenced in videos plenty of times, he's been very credible, did just make a note to everyone here, and I didn't check out this article yet because it was literally just released, um, that Jim Bowden for the, for the Athletic, who, of course, has had his fair share of not being accurate with things, has stated that in his article today on the MLB trade deadline that he is hearing a trade sending Trevor Story and John Gray to the New York Mets may actually happen. So how much substance is there? It's as simple as that report. Does it make sense? It makes endless amounts of uh, pardon me, endless amounts of sense uh, from a blockbuster perspective. I truly believe the Mets are going to make one blockbuster by the trade deadline, and it makes so much sense to kill two birds with one stone. So I want everyone to kind of unravel what they just heard here about this latest report connecting Trevor Story and John Gray and a, ma and a massive blockbuster deal, really, to the New York Mets, potentially. Uh, it's something I might make a video on if things pick up after the stream, but for for now, we're going to talk about it for a little bit, and then we're also going to expand on all the other starting pitching options the Mets have, either reportedly, potentially, and then we'll get on to the position players as well outside of Trevor's story. So I want to hear everyone's initial thoughts as we just get into the stream here on this report because, 
Again, guys, John Gray makes so much sense for the New York Mets. I connected him to the Mets going back in the beginning of June when we did a video on the channel for five starting pitching targets. I could see the Mets going after. The Mets have went after more of them than less of them to this point, it looks like. Uh, they fell through on Tyler Anderson, who was reported uh, to possibly go to the Mets yesterday. Originally, it was going to be the Phillies, but that fell through thanks to a prospect's physical not looking good. Then he ended up getting traded uh, late yesterday, later in the day towards the night to the Mariners. As the Mariners are making some surprising moves, I must say. And so Tyler Anderson's off the board for the Mets, but John Gray, who's been connected to them for a little bit, the Mets have reportedly been showing interest, according to John Heyman. A couple of days ago, I believe when he was either in a podcast or when he was on a radio show, but no less, John Gray makes a lot of sense for the Mets to add rotation to uh, Parmy to add starting pitching rot uh, rotation depth here. But Trevor Story as well, you're going to have him at short until Lindor returns, and then you're going to shift him to either second or third base, whatever you feel is most comfortable. Rental, there's no long-term commitment, and you're not going to have to give up an entire haul in this type of deal versus if, say, they were, of course, on contracts, and that's a different story. But again, thank you all so much for being here, guys. Really, really appreciate you. Trust me, I'm going to answer a lot of questions. We'll be doing a back-and-forth Q&A as I kind of break down these players one by one the, the entire time. But Thomas, with a great donation, thank you so much, my man. I appreciate you. Everyone, hype in the chat for Thomas with a $10 donation, a great member on the channel, great friend of mine. Thank you for that, Thomas. LGM, let's get Baez and Brio. So that would be the dream, wouldn't it? And I know I did a video earlier on Baez as he has been connected to the Mets over the past 24 hours from a uh, – from a discussion he had with a uh, Parmi, a radio show yesterday, and it was in uh, it was in Spanish because he's Puerto Rican, so it was translated. And I broke that all down in the video, but we'll definitely talk about that further here. So, initially, what are your stances, guys, on what has been going on with the Mets as of late? The players that the Mets have been showing interest in, and this latest report now through the Athletics saying that there have been rumors circulating uh, to indicate that potentially Trevor Story and John Gray could find themselves landing in Queens by the trade deadline. Let me hear it, everybody. Uh, Trevor is, a go, um, let's see, Baez might be suspended. Uh, I don't think there's really going to be anything rash that comes out of Baez and um, what happened with him and Amir Garrett. I'm really not too concerned on that. Uh, like, that would hurt anyone. Um, hey, it's, did I see Adam Frazier's first um, Padres at bat? I did not, Brandon. Um, I, I was not, I've not been watching the Padres game. Um, actually, I'm wrong. I the Padres game is on right now because I have MLB Network on. I just didn't realize the game was playing. I did not. That was a fantastic move for the Padres. Obviously, a player the Mets showed interest in, but felt that he was a little out of their reach um, when it came to what you have to cough up. And it, in the end, the Pirates actually had to give money to get the prospect that they were even looking for out of the three that they acquired in the trade with the Padres. So uh, that deal wasn't nearly as hefty as what I initially expected it would have been for a guy like Av Brazier, who even though it's his first real breakout year, he's been really, really good. He's been one of the best hitters in baseball when you're talking about consistency. Uh, let's see. Going for Baez has long-term benefits. Who's to say story resigns? Baez wants to play with Lindor. That's a, that's a great point as well. I do think that Baez, in a scenario where if the Mets landed him, uh, he would be heavily inclined to want to stay here long-term. Absolutely. And he might even take a slight pay cut versus what his market value would be, knowing he could stay with Lindor. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, let's see. A grain story would be great. Says Jazzy. Very intriguing. A change of scenery for both. I think would be huge. I'm ready for the moves. So am I Jordan. And again, thank you all so much. Everyone first chime in the stream. I hope you guys are having a great day. Please make sure to smash that like and subscribe on help us get to hundred likes and help us get to, of course, AK subs by August in the coming days would really mean a lot guys for your continued support. I worry. Don't you think it's weird? Dom is not in the lineup again. He mashes against lefties. Yeah, that. Okay. So I'm not going to talk about uh, yesterday. Just there Regardless, Dom today, it doesn't make sense why he's in the lineup against lefties, in my personal opinion. Same thing with Yorme. Yorme has been horrendous against lefties, but Dom has been pretty solid against lefties all year long. He's been one of, if not the Mets' best hitter. Uh, from the last time I looked at his numbers against lefties, he, at that point in time, he was the best hitter against lefties for the Mets. But maybe it's Pete Alonso now. I'm not sure. Sorry that people were um, – no worries, Matthew. Look, it, it's it, trust me, it's not a big deal. People just took it the wrong way. We have a ten dollar donation though. What type of players uh, would need to be traded to get Story and Gray? LFGM baby, thank you so much for the ten dollar dono. First of all, really, really appreciate that, guys. Let's get some love in the chat for my man Bill with the ten dollar donation. Great member on the channel, uh, long time no see. Happy to have you here. So, what would you have to give up to get them? That's a great question. I do not think you're going to be in a situation where you have to give up. Uh, you know, maybe at that point, I think it would be fair to be quite honest to part ways with Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie Mauricio to make him really be the main, the pivotal point of that trade. Cause one that could be 
potentially the shortstop of the future for a team like the Rockies. And I think that would make a lot of sense. And obviously he'd only be blocked more in a scenario land story, even with there being uncertainties on if he would resign in that situation. I think Ryan Marie, so you could have him be the actual focal point of that trade to have him be by far the biggest asset. Um, you could go other ways too of going for other prospects that are towards the back half of the top 10, if not out of the top 10 um, and potentially a roster player or two, but I'm looking at Roddy Mauricio for more reasons than one in that scenario. Darren, how are you, my man? A great subscriber and a great friend on the channel. Um, playing MLB The Show while watching the stream. Let's make story happen. Uh, where would story play? Uh, I think I announced that already, but I think that story, I'm trying to think. I don't believe story has too much experience at third base, but it, he does have the arm. I know that. So if that's something where it doesn't feel like it'll be too much of an issue for him, maybe you shift him to third and have, keep McNeil at second, or you put McNeil at third knowing he has more experience than Story does there and put uh, Story at second base, which should be an easier transition for him than going to third. Um, that is potentially an option as well. Uh, Tyler, should I go to the game tonight as a fan, even though it's my first day of... Uh, I think you definitely should, Thomas. Root for Tyler McGill. That's what I would definitely do. Uh, but again, guys, appreciate you all being here. We have so much to unravel with the Mets and what is currently going on with them. But I first want to address the rumors with Trevor Story and John Gray, according to the Athletic, that have been connected to the New York Mets as a potential blockbuster deal uh, by Friday. And again, guys, we'll be streaming today up until the Mets game. The only reason that's the only reason why I'm not streaming later in the day today is that I don't, I don't want to do it during the Mets game because I. Normally, I stream in-game live streams, and I don't want that to be connected with the trades because I really want to do a Q&A the entire time. And I don't want to do play-by-play -play commentary, and I'd rather focus on the Mets game, you know, by it uh, separately. And then once the trade deadline's done, once all the moves are done, we'll be doing plenty of in-game live streams on the channel, multiple every single week up until the remainder of the season. You can book it, I assure you. The, that's the only reason why they haven't been happening lately because there's been way too much stuff that I've had to cover Mets-wise that is more in the trade side of things than actually their in-game commentary. Um, let's see here. Why would we even trade Dom, ever trade Dom? Well, there's reasons as to why you would in the right deal, of course, um, especially in a scenario where you don't have a DH again next year. But I do believe we'll have a DH next year, so we'll we'll see what happens. Blue Jays today, how are you, my friend? Everyone, make sure to subscribe to Blue Jays today if you haven't already. Absolutely love them. They had me on their channel recently. Great friends, diehard Blue Jays fans. Blue Jays are not game Barrios, but I love your optimism, my friend. <laughs> I will say, though, if he doesn't go to the Mets, I do want him to go to the Blue Jays. That is for certain. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, whether it's Adam or Nick, whoever that was, uh, but appreciate you guys. Um, I've never seen this chat move this fast. Oh, I have. This is nothing. Are you kidding? Off-season chat? Anytime it's regarding the Mets and players are showing interest in this, everyone's going nuts. <laughs> that It's that time of year, baby. Worth mentioning the Mets prospects, like uh, who will have to be a 40-man following the season as being prospects that can be moved. That's a great point as well, Matthew. Uh, I do see a donation here from Dave, a phenomenal subscriber and great friend on the channel dave i'm literally wearing one of the many things you've sent my way we have a pl box if you guys haven't seen dave has sent a plethora of things my way including a lot of things on the wall behind me but this also this kind of mets design jersey love it thank you so much for that dave and again just thank you all so much for being here I, i'm i'm really happy that this report came out about story and gray right as we went live talk about timing so you know i might not even make a video out of it if we get everything kind of in order that should be discussed about it um, unless something drastic changes regarding it uh, before the deadline. And again, guys, if I missed any of your comments, please don't take it personally. Um, it's not it's not something I'm trying to do just because of the chat going fast and a lot of questions are asked more than once and things like that. Uh, do the Mets need to trade JD? Uh, do they need to trade JD for Bryant? No, I, I don't believe they do. They need to do that at all. I, I think that they very well could, but they can keep JD for sure have Bryant, especially in the outfield. And, you know, Bryant's done good against lefties this year. If Conforto continues to struggle, they can get creative with their platoon. Then you can have Bryant third base when he feels defense is more of a priority in the infield. They can get very creative without training JD. But again, there's a lot of reasons as to why you would trade JD in a scenario you land a man whose primary position, at least, is third base. Uh, so the story thing, again, guys, if you don't know, has been reported over the past, uh, recently an article that just came out from The Athletic stating that uh, Jim Bowden, who was the writer for The Athletic here, again, has been all that credible at times, but it's The Athletic, so they do have good sources at the same time, has said that Trevor Story and John Gray to the New York Mets might happen. So it's something to keep an eye on. 
Um, it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise either. I will say that it's the one video we really haven't done on the channel yet. And I was saying this on Twitter as well to a lot of people, how the Mets have been connected to the Cubs and the twins far more than any other club this year. Uh, to an extent with Chris Bryant, I love Brian. I hope he lands with the Mets. But if he doesn't, it's really just going to feel like a George Springer situation back in the offseason where you heard all these rumors for the longest time and then it didn't happen for a better reason in the end because I think we can all say the Mets not landing Springer. I think that was a smart move, especially given how that contract has looked to this point. Nothing personal against Springer. I'm just I'm not against the fact that the Mets don't have him. But I feel this could be similar, especially if the Mets make this trade with Colorado. They've been connected with Brios and Donaldson and rumors about Buxton that have really sparked from me going back in the offseason. And the Cubs, you have both Baez now, you have Bryant, you have Kimbrell, you have Davies, you even have uh, Tepera in the bullpen as well. All kind of connected to the Mets and go figure the Mets would be slick enough to make a trade potentially with the Rockies for Trevor Story and John Gray, uh, two players that have been connected probably the least uh, to the Mets in over the past couple weeks. John Gray has been a little consistent, but it really broke this week that's official that the Mets have been looking at him. Richie, my man, guys, definitely check out Richie uh, at Mets Media. Of course, if you have an array, love Richie. Uh, love working with him. He does great content on all things Mets, Jets, and Knicks for his other channels. And who again, I don't know, Richie, but I do think we're going to have trades soon. Be awesome if a trade happened during the stream, but I have a feeling it, it won't, to be quite honest. That's why we're just having these discussions and kind of evaluating what is happening to this point but i'm going to take a lot more questions guys then we're going to get onto the list that we have starting pitching target wise in front of me and then we will also be checking out position players uh 20 donation here from michael michael thank you so much for the 20 dollar dono really really appreciate that my friend uh would we have another big move if we do the gray story trade um it's possible but i think that would by far be their biggest move of the trade deadline I don't see anything even getting remotely close to topping that. I think the only other thing the Mets would do besides getting Gray and Story is potentially adding one more starter that can just be a guy that can move to the pen or, well, probably more than likely adding at least one reliever. Um, if there's one big name that stands out to me reliever-wise that the Mets have been connected to recently, it is Craig Kimbrell. doesn't make sense on the forefront, given Kimbrell is a save artist. We, that's what we have Adam Diaz for. But the Mets could find themselves getting creative in the scenario where you land him. Um, so, again, we'll see what happens on that front. But I don't think it, if you get Trevor Story and you get John Gray, I don't think anything even gets close to topping that for the Mets moves. Is this close to done or is it fake? Um, I, I never said it was close to done whatsoever. I, I let me You're putting words in my mouth, everybody. I'm just simply reiterating what the article from The Athletic has stated that the Mets have been, sh have been showing interest in Trevor Story and John Gray, and that a trade for them could potentially be happening. And no less, we're going to find out literally in the next 48 hours, guys. The deadline's July uh, 30th, this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, and we're going to be streaming today for a good portion of the day, tomorrow for a good portion of the day, not including any potential streams where, where a trade actually happens. And we're streaming literally all day on Friday, like literally nonstop. Um, so again, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that, buddy. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to start answering some more questions here. Then I'm going to go and piggyback off of what has happened with the players that you see here are listed, the starting pitching wise. But again, I do think that Trevor Story and John Gray are going to take up the bulk of the stream given this report. Can't wait to be at State Field tomorrow. Awesome, Dave. I hope you have a great time, my friend. That should be fantastic. What are my thoughts on the Sterling Marte trade? I think that was such a smart move for both teams, but I, I really believe the Marlins won that trade. Marte was not going to get extended. He's a rental. So what do you do? You give up what, who has been your top pitching prospect for multiple years and Lizardo. I know he's not having a great year this year, but Lizardo in that rotation, if he can get everything fixed, he's only 23. It's just the beginning of his career. I think the Marlins got an absolute slam dunk in that trade it made sense for both sides, but you know, I, I, I firmly believe the Marlins can come out the massive winner between the two in the end. Any truth to the rumors with Baez? Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, my video earlier today, it's been, he literally, I, I listened to the actual recording himself where he was on the radio show saying that, and I quote, if I'm going to hit free agency, I want to play with Francisco Lindor. And it's my, the only exception to playing second base instead of shortstop. And obviously if you're going to play with Lindor, you're going to the New York Mets. And this is with the assumption that he is not traded before the deadline, uh, by the deadline, and that he just uh, stays with the Cubs for the remainder of the year and then hits free agency. But yeah, Javi Baez makes a lot of sense for the Mets too. In the scenario where Brian is not, um, is going to be pushed aside. So you pivot to a guy like Baez. Um, again, oh, 
almost every single player the Mets have been connected to make plenty of sense, even if they're not necessarily the perfect fit right away. It's one of those things you get creative with. Let's see more of your comments, guys. Again, thank you all so much, Mets and baseball fans chiming in. We have a lot of trade rumors going on for the New York Mets, and this is going to be a very long stream. I guarantee we're, we're going to be streaming up until the Mets game today, right around 7 p.m. Eastern time, and that's when I'll call it quits. And then hopefully we'll be back some point today because that means a trade happened, right? But we'll see. I think Baden worried this horribly. He made it sound like it's going to happen when it really only might happen. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, that's this. That's what happens when you have any trade rumor going on. I never said it's going to happen either, um, but I never took it as it's going to happen. I, I took it as it's it's a potential option. It's a potential fit, and it, it wouldn't be outlandish whatsoever. Mets need to add starting pitching depth. Uh, Mike Puma uh, for the New York Post covering the Mets did tweet out earlier today that the Mets are still in talks with the Rays at, uh, starting pitching-wise, and they very well could be going for a lesser type move versus adding a big name starter and just going for lesser moves to really just add depth pitching wise. I don't really think that's going to hold true. I think that if the Mets make any trades with the Rays again, it'll be really surprising. So again, just keep that in mind. Um, I, I don't know how truthful that is and not saying the Mets aren't showing interest, but the Rays aren't, are not going to be giving up anyone whatsoever that could hurt their chances of w winning a world series this year, you know, having a deep run. Um, so again, I, I would be pretty surprised by that. Um, I think John Gray is a great option because his stats are great and he plays that course. Okay, guys, so if you want to know John Gray's stats, we'll just get into it right now. And again, I'll continue answering questions. John Gray, the 29-year-old who was originally drafted, I believe he's originally first-round pick years ago. Um, actually, a piece just came out with him yesterday on um, how he's fought adversity and depression in his career, which is really interesting as well. I'm wishing John Gray the best. You know, I know that battles can always be tough for everybody. It doesn't remark doesn't matter if you're an athlete or you're just a normal individual. Um, but Gray, he has a 3.67 year array for playing in cores. That's a damn good 91 Ks and a 1.22 whip. Now, John Gray has been inconsistent in his career. We all know that this is a guy that looked pretty, pretty good a couple years ago, then really fell off the past couple years. And now is back to looking pretty, pretty good again. He has better numbers at, at home than on the road. This year he has over four year array on the road versus a three plus year array when he's at home. Uh, a little weird how his home and away splits have been throughout his career, but uh, no less. He's having a very, very strong year, and it makes plenty of sense why the Mets are showing interest in him. Um, I'll get through the numbers of other players here shortly, but I just want to say thank you all so much again for being here. What is realistic? The Mets in regards to the deadline, things can change quickly. I, I truly believe what's realistic for the Mets is they're going to add at least one more starter. And I think that starter can be anywhere from as good as Jose Brios to anywhere as bad, if you will, as a uh, Zach Davies or even lesser, someone we don't know about to strictly add rotation depth. I think the Mets are going to, I firmly believe the Mets are going to add at least one, uh, one significant position player. And I do believe it's going to be a rental. Um, I would be pretty surprised to be quite honest if the Mets don't land one of Baez, Bryant or story. I think stories, I think, I don't think story is as realistic right now. I feel like the Yankees are primed to possibly overspend for him. Um, but I do think the Cubs have just, you know, they just make so much damn sense for the Mets, but maybe it makes too much sense to the point where, okay, Ro maybe the Rockies are more of a realistic route. Like, I don't know. It just, these things change on the fly, change by the daily. Um, and that's why I'm trying to keep you guys all on and hear what your stances are, um, on the matter right now. Um, we need to upgrade two outfield spots by next year. Dominic and Ford are replaceable. I mean, just cause they're replaceable doesn't mean they'll, they'll be replaced. Keep that in mind. Um, uh, just read more comments here. If we get Baez, there's no shot at Brian. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you get one or the other. There's no way in hell you get both. It, that, that does not add up for me. Where I got zipper. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Blacklist. If you do, please email me at my an original email that I think I've interacted with you. Um, not on the previous one. If you uh, the draw t7 at protonmail.com, that is the one I asked you to email me to if you can. Thank you. Appreciate you. Have a good one, buddy. Kyle Gibson. Yeah, we're gonna talk about Kyle Gibson. I don't think he's. I don't think the Mets are going to land him. I'm going to be completely blunt, but we're going to talk about him because he is one of the bigger names out there that is probably going to be traded within the next 48 hours. Um, let's see. Uh, where, do I think the Yankees will get Trevor Story? I mean, it seems like Story has a stronger chance to go to the Yanks than he does the Mets right now, just from the reports we've been seeing. But again, just because of 
a team is showing interest and connected, that has that does not mean whatsoever that they're going to land that player. It just means that they're showing interest and in that, you know, they have good reason to be showing interest. LSD with the $10 donation. Thank you, buddy. Everyone hype in the chat for LSD. He's a Braves fan, but he's a good sport, and he's always in the streams. It's going to hurt long-term for the Mets. Bias has one year left of his contract, so he wants long-term. That means paying two players at the same $30 million in the future. Put up Met numbers. Well, you have to realize if the Mets extend Baez long term in a scenario where they trade for him, Baez isn't even sniffing the amount of money that Francisco Lindor is making. Baez is going to make the money at least, uh, you know, by far. Baez is going to make probably right around uh, 130 to 140 million dollars less than Francisco Lindor. I feel pretty confident in that. Reports have indicated that Baez is looking for a $200 million extension. Uh, that is nowhere near $341 million, which is what Lindor's game for the next decade. That kicks in next season. Story did not get traded in the Mets, but there are connections between Story and John Gr John Gray now, according to an, ar uh, pardon me, an article from The Athletic. Sorry if you already talked to this. Uh, no problem, Brendan. How are you, my friend? Great member on the channel. But does Story play any other position? Exactly. Uh, Story is by far a shortstop more than anything he has versatility somewhat to play second and third but he does not have um a heavy background in either of the positions if from my decent knowledge on the matter i, I if you do more of a deep dive than me i could be wrong but story has been a stud shortstop he's been one of the best overall shortstops in the game of baseball um yeah story is it's a hard look to move him outside a shortstop at the same time I, I highly doubt you're going to put Lindor on second. I just I do think you're going to stick with Lindor at short, especially because he's your $341 million man. You're going to play him where he wants to be played. And Story, especially if he's rental, no long-term commitment, put him at second, see how things work, or potentially third. The fit goes well. The Mets have a deep run. If you want to stay with the club, great. If he doesn't, he walks. And the Mets shouldn't be giving up anything too significant in a trade that would land him, uh, at least from everything that has been indicated at this point. Rental should not be gaining a complete top prospect, guys, um, position player-wise. It just does not add up. I think the only one the Mets should be considering is Ronnie Mauricio in that scenario because Mauricio is blocked for his future. At the Mets' extend, whether it be a Story or even a Baez or Brian, obviously, there's just no room for them. Who's most likely to be traded to and from the Mets? Uh, the only player that I really feel that's currently on the roster right now that could find himself trade soon is J.D. Davis just because you're not going to have room for him. Outside of that, I think David Pearson has potential to be dealt, uh, knowing that he just had surgery on the outside looking in, but especially a team like the Cubs or others. Um, if they're looking for, and the Twins as well, who wants starting pitching depth, David Pearson has plenty of years of left out of control on his contract, still plenty of upside for him. And if the Mets are going to land any significant starters still, you know, Pearson's blocked for the future. So uh, I do feel that David Pearson and JD are the two guys that stand out to me the most by far that could be traded from the Mets and the players. I think that are still very much in the running to land with the Mets. It starts with Chris Bryant. You know, it, it, uh, there's no reason for it not to, I know the giants have been showing interest. I know that the Cubs are looking at a significant catcher prospect in Bart for the job from the giants to uh, make a deal happen possibly. But again, the giants, uh, that would be really foolish in my mind. If they trade Bart, I know that they're all in this year though. So maybe they will take that risk, but Again, I think the Cubs are asking high right now, uh, and they're going to have to come down to reality, uh, especially if the Mets make a trade. There's no way in hell a guy like Francisco Alvarez is going anywhere. Uh, the Mets' number one prospect who's a catcher that the Cubs showed interest in during the offseason, that's why a trade never happened. J I, look, I, I, I do agree. Let me put it this way. I really like J.D. I don't want to see him gone. But you have to realize that the Mets trade JD. It's for a greater good at the end of the day. No one's dying JD's offensive abilities. I'm the first one to tell you he is a fantastic bat. But between his injuries that he sustained all year, not a sure third baseman every single day. A guy that are you going to bank on JD Davis as your starting third baseman come playoff time over someone like Chris Bryant or even someone who's out of position, whether it's a Trevor Story or a Baez? And again, I think that they would play more second base than third. But still. A lot of these guys have playoff experience, especially Baez, especially Bryant, and they have all the characters of what it takes to win. And I really like J.D. Davis. If you can keep him and still make these trades happen, then awesome. But again, I'm just telling you, there is no denying that J.D. is one of the most susceptible guys being dealt. There's a reason why the Mets tried to part ways with him in the offseason. There's a reason why the Mets only went to arbitration with J.D., where they had to actually have an arbiter in, and it ultimately favored the Mets in the end, when it wasn't even a significant gap. It was only a couple hundred thousand in the contract that J.D. Uh, was ended, ended up getting. So 
the Mets did not do all that for them to say that they are clearly sold on JD being with the Mets. Again, I really like JD. Just all I'm saying is just don't be surprised if he's traded. That's all I'm saying, guys. <laughs> you believe the Mets will do nothing? I believe you're wrong, but I respect your opinion. Um, let's see here. Uh, Worry, what do you uh, give up as a Mets fan for Paul Lopez? Uh, Paul Lopez is not going to the Mets. That would be a sneaky move. I don't see the Mets getting Lopez, though. I really don't. I think that the Marlins have already showed a reluctance to trade within the division. I know the Mets don't have an issue because they're the buyer, but I don't I don't think Lopez is going to the Mets, so I'm really not even going to entertain that, to be quite honest with you. Um, Cubs are showing us that, hey, they always uh, would sweep us, not giving uh, no damn prospect. I mean, look, I, I think there's a really strong chance the Mets make a significant trade with the Cubs, and for good reason. If we get Trevor's story, it's like we are in business of gain um, underperforming superstar shortstops. <laughs> Look, if you get Trevor's story, change of scenery, the guy's been looming knowing that he could betray at any point this year. I think that has de definitely gone in hand with his lack of offensive production this year. I know his home and away splits suck, but again, Trevor's story, one of the best gloves in baseball in the infield. You could probably argue is the best glove shortstop-wise in all of baseball. He's just been an absolute stud. And while the heading hasn't been there in years past, there's no reason why it can't provide itself down the stretch this year too. So trust me, there are reasons why he's so coveted. <laughs> so what starting lineup will be traded? I'm not sure what you mean by that, David. I will say this though, home and away splits guys. It happens for everyone at cores. No one there not same issue. Everyone was worrying about that. He's having a very good year with St. Louis. He's very much on his normal offensive production. So that's very normal for Col for Colorado players. I, I don't think it's anything you should really be putting stock in. And we I think we did we debunked that in the offseason too when talking about Arenado. I feel like Baez, if trade to the Mets, we definitely offer him a contract to stay long term. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't I would be I'd be pretty surprised if Baez walked after being dealt to the Mets in that hypothetical scenario. But again, guys, 300 viewers. Thank you all so much for chiming in. Appreciate you guys. So Guys, I'll take I'll take some more questions, but I'm gonna just ask you in the chat. Just give me a yes or a no. Would you guys like me to break down more on the starting pitching targets that we have available on the screen, or would you like me to strictly just continue answering questions on my stances on the matter? Again, we're gonna do both. It's just a matter of when. So, give me a yes if you want to see me start breaking down these pitchers. What I think makes the most sense. That way, we can eventually pivot onto uh, position players. And then, like I said, I'll be taking questions. Yeah, and of course the Mets are going to give up stuff to get stuff. That's how life works. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as much as I would like the Mets to, the Mets to get, uh, you know, a Chris Bryant and like 50 mil cash, like uh, awfully similar to the Nolan Arenado trade with St. Louis. I know circumstances completely different. Arenado on the contract, everything. My point, though, is that you're not just going to get these things for free. Um, you're really not. So, okay. So I see an overwhelming yes versus no. Um, with what we're going to do now. So again, guys, appreciate you being here. Smash that like and subscribe on. Happy to have you all here. Again, we're streaming for two hours. So don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to get questions in. We're going to get all done. We're going to talk about anything and everything Mets right now. And we will do the same exact thing tomorrow. We might do the same exact thing around the same time tomorrow as well. So stay tuned for that. And again, if the Mets trade and or land anyone at any point from now until the deadline passes, we will be streaming it on the channel, whether we're already live talking about options for the Mets and then bam, we're going to switch it into a tr uh, trade discussion about that player. Or if I'm not live, trust me, I'll be up and running right away. So Steven, Steven, A, how are you? My Steven, I haven't heard from you in forever. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Seriously. I haven't, I literally haven't heard from you in the longest time. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Happy to have you here. All right. But now let's get into the pitchers. Okay. So let's start off with the man of the hour. The guy that a lot of Mets fans want to see land in Queens, including myself, absolutely, um, is Jose Brios. Now, Jose Brios, from a report from the Athletic that I saw earlier today, has said that it doesn't look like the Mets are currently in active talks for Brios, and yet there has been conflicting reports from other people out there that have said that the Mets are still interested in. They just are kind of on the outside looking in a little bit, given the high asking price from the Twins. And I do think that holds true to an extent because Jose Brios makes so much sense for the Mets. I absolutely love the guy. He would be a stud for them. He's 27 years of age, has a career just around four year ray, has a 3.48 year ray this year, 100, 126 Ks and a 1.04 whip. 
has so much room, so much potential to grow. I think he it makes so much sense for the Mets for this year. He's arbitration eligible after this year, so you get him for at least a run next year as well. If you're saying a situation where you can't extend him anything after that, you reunite him with Jeremy Hefner, the Mets starting pitching coach, who has worked with him for one year in his time in uh, Minnesota and has heavily advocated for him reportedly through S and Y over the past couple of weeks that he would be fantastic for the Mets. Love all that. Love Jose Brios, but you're going to have to give up a haul to get him, mainly because of him being arbitration eligible. And the Mets don't want to get in a bidding war, at least from reports they're indicating, with the NL West, really. So the Padres, Dodgers, and Giants. In my mind, I, I understand it. By the same time, I feel that the Mets, if they really want to get a good job done this year without completely overspending, I still feel that they should try to compete with these top dogs. I think it's time for the Mets to really prove where they currently stand and that they are one of the top dogs in the league market wise, like they did in the off season. Um, you know, this is something that's going to be stigma against them for a while. If they continue to push away um, against the Dodgers, against the Giants, against the Padres for going after same players. But at the end of the day, you have to do that at some point. I know that the Mets are viewing this window as not just this year, but yours going forward. I appreciate that. But the Mets also have to make significant moves where they're clearly trying to make a run this year. I feel confident that they are. I think we can all agree that they are because, yes, I know that they haven't been leading the division by, you know, 10 plus games all year long. But no less, there are reasons as to why they've faced so much adversity this year. And I can assure you that the Mets uh, were in a scenario where other teams were a lot closer to them with all their injuries happening back in May and beyond. They would have made significant moves and overspent at that point in time knowing that they're not trying to lose the division. But luckily for them, a lot of their teams have either underperformed or just had plenty of injuries and haven't faced adversity nearly as good as the Mets. But with saying that again, guys, I don't know if Jose Brios is going to happen. I really don't. It doesn't feel as likely as what it originally did even a week ago. I really hope it does happen. I absolutely love Jose Brios. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, just seen a report here. Okay. All right. Whatever. Um, it was just a report on Brian and the Giants, but it's the same exact stuff. And again, guys, we're so close to 100, so make sure to smash that like and subscribe on. But guys, in the chat, let me know right now, would you like or not like Jose Barrios? Let's start with that. Then we'll go down the list. We'll do the same thing with John Gray, Zach Davies, Max Scherzer. Scherzer probably isn't happening, but we're just going to have him there because he is available. He's just probably going to the NL West from all the reports are indicating. He doesn't look like he even wants to head to the Mets. Typical Max Scherzer, a national longtime rival. It makes some sense that you wouldn't want to actually be with the Mets. Um, uh, but again, guys, let me hear. Do you like Jose Brios or do you not like Jose Brios? Uh, simple as that. Let me hear it first. And then we'll get into these other pitchers and uh, kind of break them down further. All right, see a lot of yeses, see a lot of noes. I like that. I like diversity. That's what makes these streams fun. I like that, guys. Okay, so we have some people favoring it. Brandon, I'm doing great. How are you, my friend? Again, appreciate all my 300-plus viewers here in the stream. Okay, so Jose Brios, I'm in favor of. Um, I will say this, though. I don't know how likely it is right now. We don't know. I'm going to lean more towards the notion that the Mets don't land Brios at this point in time, with the exception being that they land him in a blockbuster deal. And I think this is something going back to the offseason that, again, makes sense. The Mets have been showing interest in multiple guys from the same club. It makes Oodle's amount of sense to land multiple guys, get a blockbuster deal. You kill multiple birds with one stone, whether you kill two birds with one stone, whether it's three birds, whether it's 10 birds. And obviously, I'm joking in that notion. But no less, it makes so much sense for them to trade with a team knowing that they can land more than one asset. Jose Brios makes a lot of sense for them. Josh Donaldson, if you get Josh Donaldson, Jose Brios should not cost as much knowing how much Donaldson's contract is. Donaldson, I'm not against Donaldson at all. I know that people don't love his contract, but the Mets are not going to have an issue with it. The Mets don't have a problem going way over the luxury tax. And they said if they're going to do it, they're going to do it big. There's no reason for them to do it small. So keep that in mind for all you people saying that there's no way in hell the Mets would do such a thing. Um Okay, so according to Andy Martino, guys, just so you know, again, it's 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 Andy. It's Andy. All right, take it with a grain of salt. But he just uh, he did just say that the Mets still scoring the league uh, for pitching depth, pen, and uh, back of rotation. Have talked recently to Milwaukee. 
Again, Milwaukee's in a, in a situation where they're competing this year. I don't see what the Mets would get from Milwaukee that would uh, benefit the Mets more than it would Milwaukee, if you know what I mean. Um, I don't see Milwaukee doing giving up anyone significant, like a hater or whoever it's going to be. You know, they're in win now this year. They're going to win the division more than likely. Um, but again, it's Andy Martino. So I'm just letting you guys know this. These are the latest reports that have coming out. So since going live now, and we've been live for 40 minutes already, which is crazy. And again, thank you for being here. We have seen reports from the uh, the Athletic that have, indica- that have indicated that a Trevor Story and John Gray blockbuster is potentially on the cusp. We'll see if that happens. And the Mets are still searching for pitching depth and that they have recently talked to the Brewers. Again, that's not surprising. None of this is a surprise to me whatsoever. So keep that in mind. But now let's get on to the next pitcher. And this is a guy we kind of talked about already. So I'll just briefly touch on John Gray, guys. Let me know in the chat. Are you in favor or are you against a guy like John Gray? Let me hear it. Especially because John Gray... You get John Gray. Could Trevor Story be a part of that? Potentially. Uh, Michael Givens, which is a very solid reliever, um, was traded to the Reds today, which is a guy that I was hoping the Mets would you know, show some interest in. But no less, it didn't get anywhere. He went to the Reds. Reds have more bullpen depth today. But let me just hear in the chat, guys, are you in favor or against John Gray potentially laying the Mets? 3.67 ERA on the year for the veteran. And is a guy that could bring plenty of rotation depth to this club. And you're not, you're not giving up the farm for him whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. That that's a given. You're gonna get John Gray. You're gonna get him at a good price. Maybe you get a little bit of bidding war. I know the Phillies want him, but I know that <clears throat> for whatever player the Mets want the most this year's trade deadline, they're not going to let any NL East rival try to get their hands on them over them. So if John Gray goes to the Phillies, that in my mind is because the Mets were not prioritizing him enough, or the Phillies just literally give up the farm for him, which would be foolish on their part and something I'd be in favor for. Unsure about Gray. Like Gray, I'm so so on John Gray. Okay, okay, so I'm seeing some mixed reviews on John Gray again. I think we're gonna see mixed reviews on all these players, so I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by you guys, I'm really not. But, um, with saying that, let's get into the next guy. And this guy, I'm sure most of you guys are gonna be like, I don't want him, I think he's garbage. First of all, he's not horrendous, I know he's nothing flashy, but this goes more in line than anything else when it comes to. Killing two birds or three birds with one stone, and that is Zach Davies for Chicago Cubs. Zach Davies, the Mets have been showing interest in, have had a dialogue with the Cubs on Davies and Gray over the past 24 to 48 hours, according to John Hammond. Um, I do believe that the talks are still there. The interest is still there. There has been nothing in Kate otherwise at this point in time. Zach Davies, however, uh, who was most known for, I remember him with the Cardinals. Then he, of course, was with the Padres, got traded from the Padres, and is now with the Cubs. Was part of that U Darvish deal in the offseason, has a 4.30 ERA. 70 Ks and a 1.49 whip. Nothing flashy, just strictly a guy to add rotation depth for sure. And is one of those players that could find himself being put in the bullpen in a scenario where Carlos Carrasco is back and healthy, looking great. He'll be starting this Friday, as we know. We'll be streaming that game. And also, Noah Syndergaard, if he somehow, some way, gets himself back in this rotation and outperforms the Davies, then you can put Davies to the bullpen. You get creative come playoff time, of course. But Zach Davies, I I honestly do not see the Mets landing without one of Baez or Bryant coming along with him. It just makes so much sense to do, again, to kill two birds with one stone there. And I know the Mets have shown interest in Craig Kimbrell. I don't think the Mets are the favorites to land Craig Kimbrell, mainly because the Mets have Edwin Diaz. Uh, it would be a little surprising for me if they really go all in and get Kimbrell. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just don't think that is going to be a guy they are for sure going to land. But I do think, again, Zach Davies, if you land him, you're getting him along with something bigger, a Brian or a Bias. So let me know now in the chat, guys, my 300-plus viewers, would you like Zach Davies as a rotation piece, especially in a scenario where you know that something bigger is coming along with it? Let me hear it, guys. And again, guys, if you're just chiming in the stream, of course, please make sure to smash out like and subscribe on. We're doing endless content. Of course, all things New York Mets. That's what we've been doing literally since I started the channel back in December. Uh, but especially will be endless content here until after the trade deadline, streaming constantly. And then, of course, after the deadline, we will be doing a lot of in-game live streams and individual videos as well down the stretch, hopefully in the playoffs. What's up, Rory? What's up, Dave? 
Uh, Matt on Davies, no on Davies, yes on Davies, potato, potato. We see a lot of different views on Davies. I think, again, he makes a lot of sense if you get Bryant or Baez. If you don't, then he's not someone I'm I'm against, but I'm not as much in favor of versus other people. And Matthew with the $2 donation. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew's a great subscriber on the channel. Been here for a while. Everyone give some love to my man, Matthew. Shout out to Tyler for uh, the in-work entertainment. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, my man. Hope you're doing well, of course. And again, you're not you're not getting a blockbuster with Zach Davies in the sense of him being, you know, the focal point of the trade. I do think if you land him, you're going to get a Baez or a Brian, in my humble opinion. Uh, Darren, thank you so much for the kind words. You know I appreciate you, Darren. Um, all love. So now let's get on to Max Scherzer, a guy that we're going to be brief on because I don't see the Mets getting him. I know that the Mets have inquired on him. Now I know that in typical Max Scherzer fashion, if reports are holding true, he doesn't want to go to the Mets. Um, he does have... Uh, he does have veto veto control, so he can really dictate where he kind of lands. And he wants to go out west. He wants to go to more of a contender than the Mets. Is what is. I understand he's 37 years of age. Why wouldn't he want to go to a team that he feels has the best chance of winning all this year? And he feels it is in the Mets. So can't blame him for feeling that way, to be quite honest. But no less, Max Scherzer, what else can you say about the man? We absolutely love to hate him. 2.83 year array for Mad Max, 142 Ks, 0.89 whip. Uh, give me a yes or a no if you'd like Mad Max and Queens. And at the same time, really just give me a yes or no if you think it's going to happen. I'm very much in the favor. That is not going to happen uh, until someone's trade. Anything's possible, but I don't I don't see it happening <laughs> for obvious reasons. I really don't, folks. Sure, sir, don't want to be the number two. Yeah, I can't. I I mean, look, doesn't want to face a spotlight. What, what else can you do, right? No, no, we got a lot of no's. I, I think that that was pretty universal. I, I expected that, everybody. I did. And again, guys, if you're just chiming in the stream, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you guys as we were talking about all things New York Mets leading up to the MLB trade deadline. We're going from now really until 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm just talking about all these, all the latest reports, all these different things. So really not going to waste any more time on Max Scherzer, to be quite honest. Nothing personal, Mad Max. Just I don't think you're going to Queens and, you know, kind of upsets me. Uh, so now let's get into uh, the other options for the Mets that have not reportedly been connected to them, but are overall available via the market and are probably going to be traded by the deadline. Starting with Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson was a lot more appealing a couple months ago than he is now to me. He has given up, I believe, 13 runs in his past two starts. Uh, Gibson has not looked that good as of late. He has an over four year array over his past seven starts, I believe. Uh, but no less, Kyle Gibson, 8.8. 2.87 year ray for the veteran right-hander, 94 Ks, 1.18 whip. I believe he has another year of control on his contract. Uh, Kyle Gibson makes sense. Again, though, not someone that I think you should give up anything too significant for. Uh, has not been a solid starting pitcher at all throughout his career up until the season, until he's just, for whatever reason, just had a revelation drinking from the fountain of the youth, whatever it is. No less, he's really been outperforming and way above expectations. So, let me hear your thoughts on Kyle Gibson, everybody. Would you be in favor of Kyle Gibson, or do you not like Kyle Gibson as a trade option for our New York Mets? Let me hear it, everybody. So we see yeses and we see no. I actually was a little surprised. We see more yeses than I expected. Okay. Okay. We see a lot of people in favor of Kyle Gibson. Okay. People showing some Kyle Gibson love. There you go. Okay. Stephen A is like, I, I just I just want to buy his and Kimbrel to trade. And I will say this though, before we go anything further, guys, Zach Scott has just stated over the past 10 minutes that uh, the Mets are still very much looking to acquire a starting pitcher. But at this point, it's likely more of a depth guy. So what is qualified as a depth guy in my mind? It is basically all the Mets options that are realistic, not Max Scherzer and not Jose Barrios. So and the Mets are going to land more of a depth guy in this rotation. I think it's fair to say that takes Barrios out of the running because yes, you could say Barrios maybe he's a fourth or fifth star, but I, I don't agree with that. I think Barrios can very well find himself as um, being a, a number three in this rotation, if not this year, the next year. So uh, that's just my humble opinion, though. Maybe he is still viewed as a depth guy. And again, I see comments here on Twitter that are saying, what is deemed as a depth guy? 
Um, I think I really believe this just rules out Barrio. So if that's true, if Zach Scott is holding true that they're just looking for more of a depth rotation piece, I'm looking at John Gray, Zach Davies, um, Michael Panea, Kyle Gibson for sure, Danny Duffy. Those are guys I'm looking at. Basically everyone but Jose Brios and Max Scherzer. So love Jose Brios. I still hope it happens, but it just does not feel as likely at this point in time. And yes, I saw the Devils got Dougie Hamilton. Um, Danny Duffy is fine. And we're going to get into Duffy shortly. But I also want to make note, guys, that according to Michael Mayer, again, for Mets Morales, because he's just been uh, been uh, reiterating what Zach Scott has been saying uh, in his presser, uh, Zach Scott also says that the Mets have, in fact, explored train for players that can play shortstop and then shift to other positions once Lindor is back. So something that he said that they would potentially look at and to weigh their options and his presser, what, two days ago, I believe, he has now confirmed that the Mets have been exploring those options. So what qualifies as a shortstop that can shift to a second or third base? Uh, that is a rental. That is a position player that would make plenty of sense for the Mets. He's the same guy that we just did a video on the channel earlier today in Javi Baez. So check out that video if you haven't. And Trevor Story as well, but I do. Trevor Story does not have as much versatility as Javi Baez. But again, I don't think it would be a, a too tall of a task for Trevor Story, who's been playing the hardest position in all of baseball when it comes to a fielding perspective at short, that would be more of a tall task for him to be at second or third. I don't think he really gained much of a liability there. He's His glove is amazing regardless. So, um, But yeah, I do look at Javi Baez, Trevor Story, and if you want to go a little bit lesser options there, you could potentially look at, um, you know, there really isn't there really isn't many others rental-wise that stand out to me but those two. Uh, those are by far the big names, but again, Mets could be looking for options that are, say, not as prominent, if you will. So we'll stay tuned on that. But again, guys, to my 260 plus viewers, appreciate you guys. Please make sure to smash that like and subscribe on. If you're just chiming in again, we are, of course, talking about everything regarding the New York Mets. Not game was postponed. Yep, I saw that. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about everything New York Mets, all the players they've been showing interest in, um, all this stuff. So just keep that in mind. But now let's get into, of course, Danny Duffy. Danny Duffy is a guy that I don't feel is likely, but there's obvious appeal to him. Main thing with him being a southpaw. Never hurts to have another southpaw in this rotation. The Mets got Rich Hill, but they got Danny Duffy. That would help a lot as well. I It'll be interesting to see what kind of package you're looking for, though, because Danny Duffy is a guy that does not necessarily want to leave Kansas City, nor does Kansas City fully want to trade him from reports I've seen. But no less, the veteran southpaw is a 2.51 year array. It's been up and down his career, but has really had himself a strong season. 65 strikeouts and a 1.21 whip. So with that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts here in the chat on Danny Duffy. Is he someone that you would actually like to see land with the New York Mets? And is, is he someone that you feel the Mets are actually looking at and maybe it just hasn't been reported at this point? Let me hear it. You guys, wine bias makes no sense. I, I I think it's foolish to say that there's no sense in in uh in Lanny Bias. Like everyone else, there's positives and negatives. Bias doesn't make as much sense than Chris Bryant. Wholeheartedly agree. But to say that bias doesn't make any sense is outlandish. Danny Duffy reminds you of the Simpsons beer. Me too. You're not the only one. <laughs> That's funny. You were at the game last night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dave. Bias is not on the live tonight. Uh, uh, possibly a trade. I mean, anything's possible, but I know that I'm trying to think. Wasn't Baez out? No, no, I'm sorry. I, I know that Baez had the thing going on with Garrett, but I don't know. I honestly don't know um, if he's going to get traded today. I, I think there's a solid chance Baez gets traded, though, by the deadline for sure. You're going to the game on Friday. Awesome, awesome. So, again, to kind of reiterate about Danny Duffy, some of you guys want him, some of you guys don't. So, to – Recap and wrap up the starting pitching options for the Mets that have either been reported, the Mets have shown interest in, or guys that can make sense for the Mets. 
more so as depth options, according to a guy, of course, like Zach Scott, who's just stated that they're looking more depth options than anything starting pitching-wise. Michael Pineda, uh, Pineda is a lot most notorious for getting kicked out of a playoff game uh, representing the Yankees against the Red Sox because he had pine tar on his neck. But no less, Michael Pineda has still been a serviceable starting pitcher at this point in his career. The veteran for the Twins has a 3.86 ERA, 64 strikeouts, and a 1.19 win. You're not going to give up much of anything to land a guy like Pineda, and he is potentially someone that you land with aspirations of wanting to get someone else from the Twins organization. Again, the Mets have shown interest in a lot of guys there, so keep that in mind. But Michael Pineda, Pineda for the final guy that we we're talking about with the Mets starting pitching options, before we get to position players, how do you feel about him? Do you like him as a depth move, knowing that you're really not going to have to give up much to get him? Let me hear it, guys. And he does have playoff experience, even if it hasn't necessarily been all that pretty. We see some yeses. We see some noes here in the chat from Michael Pineda. Okay. I'm, uh, I, see, I see people don't want Pineda. Far, uh, that's far greater than people that do want Pineda. Uh, that's fine. Uh, see, uh, story and John Gray trade seems right. And again, we'll talk about that more folks, but again, thank you all so much for being here. Smash that like and subscribe on. I was getting 200 likes would really mean a lot guys. We're still going for another hour and a half here in the stream. So now let's pivot on to what is more exciting for, I think most Mets fans, um, at this point in time, when it comes to the trade deadline and as much as pitchers are ideal, especially if you're going for depth guys, I think we're, we're, we're going to talk more about the position players. So let's just get right to it, folks. Let's talk about the position player options that the Mets have both shown interest in and guys that could potentially be a fit. And who knows? Javi buys Trevor Story. These, these are guys that literally have just been connected to the Mets more. So they could find themselves more in the target category than just being a potential option. So let's just unravel here, guys. I'm going to take questions for probably the next 10 minutes on what we are currently unraveling with the Mets and their position player options. And then I'll break them down one by one further and ask you guys, would you like him or would you not like him? So ask away. But again, this is an exciting time to be a Mets and a baseball fan. We've seen endless trades. Uh, we've seen a lot recently. It's been really entertaining. Uh, the Tyler Anderson situation was fine to me yesterday. Uh, again, the Mets were interested in him. I think the Mets really wanted him. Uh, to get him for the start yesterday, and it fell through, and that's why they basically punted yesterday's game, which, again, is not ideal, but just something they ended up doing. I don't agree with it, but it is what it is, and he didn't even end up going to the Phillies and went to the Mar Mariners, which I found really, really funny. So if you guys have questions, let's get on to that, and then we'll go forward here on the all the players and breaking them down one by one. What about Reds, Gray? Uh, I, Reds are buying this deadline, which is telling that they are not selling at this year's deadline. Uh, they literally have added bullpen help with Sessa, uh, Wilson, and now uh, Givens over the past 24 hours. So Reds are not selling at this year's trade deadline. They are trying to make a run, which, again, I find fairly foolish. I understand why they're doing it, especially for the fan base, but they have a big hill to climb unless they make significant moves. Zach Scott. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, we, we have to be in on good players. We're the New York Mets. We have to be in on anyone who can impact the club. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Thomas. And again, Zach Scott is currently on the fan. I believe that has been making these statements. So guys definitely chime in if you have an array. And yes, I do believe bias is hurt. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I thought I saw something with his heel unless I'm thinking of someone else. If not Javi Baez, Kimbrel, Go, Story, and Gray. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against either of them. I'm really not. Dream trade scenario for me, Jeremy. Dream trade scenario. Uh, dream trade. Dream trade scenario is Jose Barrios, Byron Buxton. Absolutely, my dream scenario. And that you don't give up. Um, you know, too much that's going to hurt you. But again, that's outlandish thinking. That's why you asked for a dream scenario, dream trade, and that's what I gave you. Byron Buxton, Jose Barrios is my dream. <laughs> 
kind of kind of will be for a while. And your opinion of Javi Baez is a fit for a Mets? I, I tend to agree. I, I I don't think he's as perfect as Bryant when it comes to fit, but there are a lot of upsides to landing him. Uh, same way there are upsides in landing Trevor Story, but I think Baez has a decent amount more upside than Story, uh, especially given his connection to Lindor and, of course, the ability to, to resign him potentially in the offseason and the cost. Realistic trades, I, again, I, I said this already, but I think realistic for the Mets, they're going to add a depth starter, which is what Zach Scott just reiterated on the fan. I do think they're going to go and land one significant bat, and I'll be surprised if it's not one of Story, Bryant, or Baez. I really will. Maybe it's a Josh Donaldson, and that's because you get Barrios. But again, I think one of those rentals is destined to land in Queens. Um, and I think a lot of teams are interested in all those three as well. So especially the Giants. The Giants are really, really interested in landing one of Bryant or Story to really help give them a push and help them stay afloat at, at first in the oh-so-difficult NL West. You think we just need pitching? Okay, to, I, I definitely agree we need more pitching help, absolutely, and also in the bullpen. Why do I want Byron Buxton? Because when healthy, he's an MVP caliber player, has proven that this year. Again, injuries have been his kryptonite at this point in his career, but he's electric. He is literally one of the most underrated players in the league, and as long as that man can stay on the field, he brings you platinum glove defense at center or wherever you need him, but especially at center field has unbelievable speed on the bags, can literally leg out, normally would be a grounder to third, and he's probably getting safe on first. In the prime of his career, very young, still in his mid-20s, um, has year, uh, another year or so of control on his contract. He's so appealing, he, and, and his bat is really coming together. His bat has taken another level this year and started to break out as well last year. Um, Byron Buxton will always be my dream pick. Always, 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 always. Manny Lopez, what's up, buddy? How how are you? Great member on the channel. Who's coming to Queens by Friday? I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be someone. <laughs> I can tell you that much, Manny. Um, I feel that the Mets have a good chance against some of these guys. You want Bryant Simeon? Marcus Sim Simeon isn't getting traded. The Blue Jays are adding. I don't think they're subtracting at the deadline at all. No, Brian or Donaldson. I'll take Baez or Story with Kimbrel. Okay. Uh, been a while. How are you, Bambino? A great supporter here. My man from Puerto Rico. Hope you're doing well. Baez, Kimbrel. Don't uh, don't quite trust Diaz. Okay. I can understand that. Um, I would rather have Story and Gray than uh, Buxton and Barrios. Uh, that will kill your whole farm system. Like I said, uh, he asked for my dream. Uh, it's a dream. I'm not saying it would make sense or that would happen. Your tweet about them talking... Uh, for uh, minor deals with the Rays is so accurate. No idea what they're exactly, Dean. And that's why you can't put a complete stock in all these reports. Just know that, you know, they're important to an extent. And these are all weighing options for the Mets. Take this with a grain of salt, but the Mets are one of, if not the most aggressive suitor for uh, Kimbrell. I've heard that rumor. That rumor has not come from anyone significant whatsoever that I have seen. Um, but no less, it's possible. I, I just, I don't agree with it. I don't think that's true right now. We'll see. We'll see who's more right in the end. Matt's GM just said they are looking for a shortstop that can play any position when Lindor comes back and that they are looking for depth at starting pitching, so likely nothing big there. Uh, starting pitching-wise, yes. It does look like they're aiming more towards a depth starter, according to the GM himself and Zach Scott. Yes, absolutely. Uh, team uh, Teams throughout, teams get uh, more of the Cubs want – Mets to offer more. It's play. Oh, I, there's definitely play of this. You're absolutely right. But the Giants are also uh, very much interested in uh, Brian from numerous reports. Eric with the 555 donation. I like that little play on numbers there. Appreciate that. Everyone hype in the chat for Eric for the roughly $6 donation. Thank you, buddy. Um, how many bridges can I buy for my super chat? Uh, don't forget the D-backs with Kelly and Escobar for me. Brios, Gibson, Gray, and Bryant Story. Those are your favorites. Okay. Appreciate that, Eric. Again, appreciate the donation, my friend. Hope you're doing well as always, buddy. And yes, uh, Merrill Kelly and Escobar, that's more bottom, bottom of the barrel thinking. 
especially with a guy like Escobar. Um, I'll be very surprised, let me put it this way, if the Mets settle with uh, Kelly and Escobar, especially as their biggest moves of the deadline. If they do, then uh, they're clearly more focused on the offseason and ahead uh, and hitting for agency. But again, Merrill Kelly is someone that they've been connected to. Escobar, slightly connected to, uh, would make sense, especially off the bat, once every, uh, bench, once everyone's healthy, has pop in his bat. Uh, not a great filter, however, kind of passes prime. We all know that situation. But wouldn't be against him as long as he isn't the main move. I, I think Baez is going to land at NY anyway, Yankees or Mets. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Anderson did not go to the Phillies. He actually ended up going to the Mariners because the Phillies uh, had an issue with one of their prospects um, and the actual uh, physical that came with it. So uh, that trade was rejected, and he instead went to the Mariners. You're going to the Dodgers-Giants game? Also, have a fantastic time. That's going to be a playoff-type atmosphere. It's going to be electric. Like how New ownership keeps it quiet. I do too, Thomas. I do too. Rumors will continue to swirl, but they'll they'll make the right moves for the for this club. I'm very confident in that. I really am. And we're just over an hour in the stream, guys. So I don't know where we are in the like count, but again, please make sure to smash that like and subscribe on. Really, really mean a lot, guys. One is my prediction for the Mets next move. It's tough. Uh, my Don't take my prediction any, with any seriousness, guys. I know just as much as you do. That's why we're all talking and having a discussion as a family, as all being diehard Mets fans. But I will say that I don't think the Mets are making a trade tonight. I do think that the Mets make a trade. It'll happen potentially tomorrow. Um, and actually, yeah, I'd say I'd say first first move we may see with the Mets can be tomorrow. I, I have a feeling it won't happen today, though. And my humble opinion. Um, hope I hope I'm proven wrong. Uh, I'm getting tired of you know hearing crickets and all these rumors and nothing, no substance yet. But we'll see what happens. Yes, I did see Turles home run. That was crazy. After getting traded. Yep. Please don't get Trevor Story one eighty one batting average away from Coors again. Coors effect is a complete myth. Happens to everyone uh, seriously. So I know he's having a really bad year away right now, but. That, that'll change. That'll naturally change. I don't think that we should be too terribly worried about that. What's up, Tyler? Listening to Zach Scott sounds like he's got something brewing. I'm not going to speculate, but I think we're in good hands. Absolutely, Kane Snow. Hope you're doing well, my man. Great subscriber on the channel. Um, Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Zach Scott, I like him a lot as a Mets GM. I hope he stays as a Mets GM too, as long as they're not too passive. Um, But yeah, yeah, I really, really like him as uh, the Mets GM, and I think they're going to make the smart moves. A Lavelle with a ten dollar dono. How are you, my man? Long time no see. Appreciate you. What's up, Warrior? You hope all is all is well. Everything's fantastic. A Lavelle, hope you're doing well. Jared Eikhoff was just DFA'd again, guys. So not shouldn't come as a surprise. But Eikhoff is once again gone. I think that's the last time we will ever see Jared Eikhoff in a Mets uniform. Uh, it should be at least nothing personal against the guy, but he he's got to take a hike. So apparently Baez has his sights on playing with Lindor. Yes, Thomas, that's what we've been talking about. Unless have you seen a further report uh, outside of what we talked about uh, yesterday and now today on the channel in the video. Uh, why not put Baez at third, uh, Lindor and uh, McNeil not move to third or left? I mean, you can put Baez at third, um, but he's had more experience at second in his career, especially alongside Lindor. Baez played second base with Lindor during the time uh, representing Team Puerto Rico. And McNeil has experience at third base. So that's the reasoning behind uh, my stance there. Am I going to stream the game tonight? No, we're going to be streaming right up until the game. Cause again, there won't be any in-game live streams until trade season is done. And so that means that Friday we'll be streaming literally all day. We'll be streaming probably from 12 up until the trade deadline passes. And as long as I'm not too gassed, we'll try to make sure we can stream for the actual end game uh, stream between the Mets and the Reds as well. So yeah, Friday's going to be crazy. We're going to have stream tomorrow as well. Give me bias or we riot. riot. Okay. So Richie is very much on the bias train now. Interesting. Richie. I let, look, I, I think what appeals me so much about Javi bias too, personally is just, just who he is. I mean, I hate his on base. I hate his swing and miss the guys for rent. The guy strikes out so much, but he still is at a point in his career where he can, fix that to an extent and i think that a change of scenery will only benefit him and francisco Lindor, who does have a good eye at the plate 
that can get on base plenty is a guy that could really help him in that scenario too. So yeah, I, I like buys a lot. I I'm still, Brian is my number one guy in my personal opinion, who I would want the most from the Cubs, but Baez is right behind him then in a scenario where you do not land Brian. And yes, Zach Scott has in fact said that he expects things to pick up in the next two days. Obviously, that you know the <laughs> the trade deadline is Friday, so of course he expects things to pick up in the next two days. There's literally no other time for it to. Um, I will. Zach Scott has a way of words. He really knows how to give you a whole lot of nothing out of you asking a very detailed and descriptive question. Uh, uh, or he's he's really really good with the with the media. I, I must say, and I I enjoy. It's entertaining to me. You know, he's, he's very, he's very well-spoken. Why are most of the deals made on Friday instead of this entire week? Because you have multiple teams going after one player and normally teams that are the sellers like to drag things out to get the highest price. Um, if they, if they make trades too soon from a buyer standpoint, you could be coughing up way too much one um, because prices could be that high. Cause naturally they start to drop as you get into, um, you know, later, depending on if there's a bidding war or not. So there's risk to dragging things. But at the same time, there's also a lot of personal gain for a seller if you save a bidding war go on, because then you can have a team overspend in that scenario too. So that's usually why it drags on to the deadline, because it really goes up until the point where you're cornered and all right, a decision needs to be made. So you're going to see how one club acts, if they act irrationally or not, and then some. And yes, I saw Jack's tweet. He's just saying all speculation. I, I, I would tweet the same exact thing. Yeah. Uh, all Mets, I think most Mets fans, we all feel the same way right now. And I've been I've been advocating, I've been saying the exact same things. I do believe that they are going to make a big splash. Definitely give me bias over Bryant. Love his energy. Um, add a starting pitcher as well. And let's go win a thing. Yeah, I, sign me up, Bernie. I, I really, really am in favor of the Mets having a deep run this year <laughs> for obvious reasons, right? I want Kimbrell the most. Diaz cannot be trusted in playoffs. We'll see how Diaz comes in, in this situation where he's in playoffs. But again, Kibrell knows what it takes to one. He won a World Series of 2018 with the Red Sox. He's arguably the best reliever in baseball right now. He's been dominant 23 for 25, I believe, in safe situations from the last time I looked at the numbers. Uh, yeah, he's been good. <laughs> I don't want Brian personally. He says he would consider signing back with the Cubs after the season is over. Well, I, I think it would be fairly wrong of him to say otherwise. Um, trust me, if Bryant gets traded, he's not going back to the Cubs. I, I, I see there's a little to zero chance Chris Bryant stays with the Cubs. Um, if he hits free agency, there's, there's no way in my mind, absolutely no way. That is something that we would come back here to. And I would be jaw dropped. I, I, I don't see it happening at all. Do we have enough in the farm for a big deal? Hank, we do. We do. Again, though, it varies on the deal you're looking for, but the Mets are, don't have to give up their number one or number two prospect for, you know, any guy they're looking for. The Mets are prioritizing rentals right now, especially when it comes to position players. Javi Bias, Trevor Story, Chris Bryant. These are guys that unless you get in a full betting war where you might have a little bit more of an issue and you uh, teams are forced to overspend, and I don't think the Mets are really going to, they can make a deal happen for one of these three guys without giving up the entire farm. And I think we can all feel comfortable saying that. Cattell Marte, that's a bold pick. Marte is a phenomenal player. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I know that Marte is one of those that a lot of Mets fans, I would love Marte. I would. Um, that that would that would be such a Mets move to get Cattell Marte after being in rumors for all these different guys. That would be a very Mets move in the sense of just going out of nowhere versus what little fans expected and what has been reported. Why do you have a feeling the Mets will do nothing? I don't know, John. Probably because they haven't really done anything yet outside of Rich Hill at this point. So naturally, you're thinking, you know, nothing's happening. But in reality, things will happen. Dark Knight in all black? No, no. Matt Harvey will never pitch a game for the New York Mets again. It would be a massive L if Rocker doesn't sign. Or, yeah, I, I, I think the Mets have to do everything that they can to sign him, regardless of what his elbow issue is. On a side note, 100... He is a 
talent that does not come often, especially with the 10th overall pick when he was, uh, you know, universally the number one consensus pick going into this spring. Um, yeah, Met, I don't know what his issues are health wise, but Mets need to make sure that they do not let him go. Uh, he's not worth a guy dropping and getting a pick next year. It does not make sense to me. Uh, here we have a new membership from Chapo. Thank you so much for that. I apologize if I've said your name wrong. Chapo or Chepo. I appreciate that though, guys. Let's get some hype in the chat for them for becoming a new member on the channel. Thank you kindly for that. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hype in the chat. Um, let's see. Diaz isn't bad. Uh, his, yes, uh, Diaz isn't bad. You're right. He's just been a little bit more consistent as of late, but he's also, well, he's been dominant his past two outings, but before that he had a little stretch after the all-star break, but overall he's been pretty damn good for the Mets and save situations this year. Non-save is a different story. Okay. Let's talk about what we give up. What do you, uh, have to give up for each player you mentioned? Okay. Well, it obviously varies. And the reason why I can't go too in depth is the Mets could find themselves landing multiple of these players in the same deal. And if that happens, which feels pretty likely, whether you're training with the Cubs, the Twins, or even the Rockies, that is going to heavily dictate the kind of assets you're giving up versus if you're, say, just trying to land one guy, one rental, that's a different story. I think prospect-wise for the Mets, there have been reports that the Mets aren't willing to part ways with Mark Vientos. I think that would be a little foolish. As long as the price is right, I think that that's a guy that's susceptible because he doesn't really have room in the near future for the Mets. I know he's dominating uh, with Binghamton and A, but still... I think prospects outside of Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, Matt Allen, Kamar Rocker with the assumption he signed, of course. I think those are the only for sure locks that have zero chance of being traded. Everyone else is a potential option to be part of a deal at the right price. Ronnie Mauricio, you're not giving him up unless it's something significant because he's been doing really well this year. But I do think he has a potential to be dealt at the right price as well, knowing that there's literally no room for him right now with this club. It will name you where he's room. He's been played at mainly shortstop all year long. And if that isn't telling that they're there, they could potentially be trading him. And I know that a lot of teams are interested in Mauricio. I know that the twins are, would like a guy like Mauricio. I know that the Cubs would probably like him as well, especially if they can't keep Javi Baez, of course. JT Ginn stands out to me. I know he's a prospect. The Mets would like to keep. He's the Mets. One of the Mets best starting pitching prospects has done really well since moving up. Uh, to, uh, pardon me, high a Brooklyn. He's done really well this year. Um, but he's a guy that I know the Cubs have liked as they scout him at Port St. Lucie before he got moved up. Uh, Palmer as a guy that's been scouted a bit. Uh, I've seen rumors of other guys from the Mets out more so, uh, at the end of the top 10 outside of the top 10. No less. There are plenty of prospects. The Mets will be willing to part ways with as long as one, it's not complete overpayment. And two, again, it's just, it has to be the right price. That's all, all it comes down to. And roster players, there's only a couple roster players I feel having a decent to significant chance of being traded. Starts with J.D. Davis, obvious reasons. Going back to the offseason, there's reasons why they've been trying to upgrade their base this entire time. Love J.D., but just don't be surprised if he's traded. That's all That's all I have to say. Uh, David Pearson is guy. I think that could be appealing even after having surgery now. Um, I think David Pearson, especially if the Mets add another arm, um, would fit a lot of clubs like the Cubs, like the twins, like others. I would like a young starting pitcher that has plenty of years of arbitration left, plenty of years in control. That makes a lot of sense to me. So David Pearson, JD Davis are the two guys that stand out to me personally, the most that can be traded off this roster. Um, I don't, I don't really see anyone else uh, being dealt. Dom Smith, a slight chance, very slight, very slim chance. And that would only truly make sense to me if they land a guy that's going to be playing mainly the outfield. Um, and they don't trade Conforto. I don't think Conforto is going anywhere, even with him slumping this year, especially with him being a rental too. Will they go after Bryant long-term? If they trade for him, they absolutely could. They absolutely could. I'm not saying they will, but for sure, I'm sure that would be along their interest. And yes, I did see Darno was going on a rehab assignment. Why do people want to trade JD? Okay, oh my goodness. There's a difference between wanting to trade JD and knowing that the Mets have wanted to trade JD. No one's disputing that JD's a good hitter. I said this in the offseason, I'll say it again. There's no one disputing that whatsoever. All I'm saying is he has been the guy that has been connected by far, not even close in trade talks going back to the offseason. 
The Mets literally went to the point of having to get an arbiter only for him, for his new contract, to just re-sign him for the year. And they were only off by a couple hundred thousand, and they didn't want to give it to J.D. They heavily pursued other third base options to upgrade over him. There's no that's that's the whole JD talk. It's not that I want him to be traded. I'm just telling you, don't be surprised. He's the by far have been the biggest guy in trade rumors as currently on this active roster, and it's not even remotely close with the rest of the club. Do you think Story's power drop a bit uh, once? Um, I think Story is going to be fine. Yeah, power might drop a little bit, but again, look at Nolan Arenado. He's having a good year with St. Louis. Um, I don't I don't necessarily think we're going to see Story hitting 35, 40 bombs at wherever he lands, but you know, 25, 30 guy I think would be more than feasible. Um, he's in the prime of his career, having a down year. I definitely think it goes in hand with his contract. Never said Dom was going anywhere. Why Brian extension? Well, if you extend Brian, then you're probably going to trade away Beatty. And then you could get something significant for him if he is blocked. So that, that goes the rationale behind that. Or you have Beatty at third and you have Brian in the outfield and then you have a DH, hopefully next season beyond. So if Dom's still on the club, you have Dom at DH or Alonzo at DH. They flip between the two. And then if Conforto's still on the club, you're going to have him in the outfield. So I, DH is going to be a massive impact for the Mets for the greater good with the assumption they have it next year. And it's a joke if they don't, and it's a joke that they didn't this year. And that's a tangent for another day. You guys know my stances about, you've known literally since January. <laughs> best starting pitching options to trade for um, best or most realistic, Mike. That's my counter. A story you would put at second or third, whatever is most comfortable for him being on an off position if the Mets trade for him for one Lindor is back and healthy. What's up, Sledge? And no, you really didn't miss anything. We're just talking about all things regarding the Mets and the trade rumors that have been circulating around with them leading up to the deadline. And to kind of rehash what we have discussed at this point as we are over an hour in this live stream, a couple of things. It's one that the Mets uh, through the athletic has been reported earlier today, right when the stream started that it uh, looks like Trevor story and John gray could find themselves as a potential fit for the Mets as a blockbuster deal. And uh, Zach Scott has stated that the Mets are still prioritizing starting pitching, but they're looking more so the depth route than a clear, you know, like a number one or a number two. Um, and that, you know, they're going to be making moves over the next two days. We all know that. Do I, not, I do like Wade Miley, but I don't think he's getting traded now because the Reds are buying at this year's deadline. They're not selling. Um, and that was something that was a coin flip for them if they do or not, but their recent acquisitions over the past 24 hours will indicate they will not be selling big at all at the deadline. They'll just be adding. I love Baez's personality too. Again, that's one that that's a big upside if you land Baez. Just him and Lindor, I know, would be so much fun together. It would be infectious. It really would. It's one of those. It just feels like a match made in heaven. Um, but again, realistically, for the club, position wise, versatility wise, the man who's been connected to the Mets longer than anyone else is Chris Bryant. So, the Mets land and any of those Cubs, I'll be very much in favor of it. I'm no betting man, Thomas, because I'm not one to favor in a scenario of betting. Um, again, I, I don't. I really don't want to say anything further. That I, I, if I'm gonna bet, I, I can bet you guys. I okay. Let's go with if I'm a betting man, I bet that the Mets land one of Story, Baez, or Brian. I, I bet that if I'm gonna be a betting man, I'm, I'm standing pretty firm on that. There's always risks that it won't happen, but given everything, I'm gonna bet on that for now. But again, this is why I'm not a betting man, because watching that happen. Um, and I do think that the Mets are going to land, obviously, another starter and at least one more reliever. And Brendan with the $20 donation, I really, really appreciate you, my man. Great member on the channel. Really, really means a lot for the donation. Kudos for an ultra long stream. But thank you so much, my man. I hope you're doing well again. I always appreciate talking to you, Brendan. And I appreciate the $20 dono. Let's get some dono hype and love in the chat for my man, Brendan. Thank you so much, buddy. Can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate that.
I do not play fantasy baseball. I have not to this point, at least. I debated on it going into the year, but chose not to. I'm I'm glad I I'm glad I didn't. Mets get Mad Bum and Soria from the Diamondbacks. I mean, I don't I don't want Bumgarner. I know he has playoff experience, but he's washed. He's not what he once was. Um, I know you're just adding depth. Maybe if you have Bumgarner come out of the pen, especially down the stretch when you get Soria is a guy that could keep an eye on too. Reliever, of course, for the Diamondbacks. That isn't outlandish at all. Um, Diamondbacks are that sneaky team that could find themselves making some significant trades selling at this year's trade deadline. So it's not completely outlandish, Joe, but I would be awfully surprised if the Mets got Mad Bomb. Perfect bullpen arm for the Mets. Perfect. If, perfect's tough to me. Um, hmm. If you're being honest, one, one bullpen option that actually made a lot of sense to me but it's probably out of possibility now or less likely was Taylor Rogers from the twins. He's having a good year, but he, he just got hurt and he might be out for a while with a finger injury. So he was a guy I liked a bit. Uh, Craig Kimbrell. I think when you're just talking about a dominant guy to give you that playoff success and to surely help you on close situations. Um, that is awesome. Uh, Richard Rodriguez is another name that's been out there for a bit, uh, but doesn't feel as likely he'd go to the Mets. I know the blue Jays have been in on him. I know some other clubs have as well. What will the Mets game get played tomorrow? Uh, I know the weather doesn't look good tomorrow, so I honestly don't know. I, I honestly don't know at this point in time. And if the game does get canceled early, then we might push tomorrow's stream till later towards game time, knowing that you know we don't have to worry about focusing on the game as well. I will buy Icop to receive the Mets make the NLCS. I, Thomas, I don't know why you do these things yourself, but okay. Okay. <laughs> what as a thank you to Icoff for helping us get here in some way, shape, or form? Yes, Jay Boogie. A's pitcher does have a perfecto right now. And uh Mr. Um Shamanea, Manaya, however you pronounce his name. He does have a no no in his career as well, too. So I'm gonna knock on wood for him and hope I don't jinx anything. But yeah, definitely put on that game at this point between the Padres and the uh, A's. All right, guys, with that being said, because we are looking just under an hour and a half into the stream. Again, we're going to be going for another hour, right, right up until the Mets start of their game tonight at 7. So would you guys like me to break down every player individually here that I have listed when it comes to position players uh, as possible options for the Mets? And I'm going to ask you guys then in the chat if you would be in favor of it by commenting yes or simply by commenting no. Let me know in the chat right now, guys. Yes or no, would you like me to pivot now into each of these individual players? Bet some tickets, nothing will happen. Randy, you're in for a surprise, my friend. For all the people that still think this is the old regime, clearly didn't pay attention in the offseason whatsoever. Uh, Buxton is still fairly available, but he does have a willingness to still want to stay in Minnesota, but he did reject his actual, um, the contract extension. I believe it was seven years, 80 million. Again, though, we're going to get into all that right now, though. We're going to get into all that right now. Bring up Alvar Alvarez next month. No, no. Uh, Francisco Alvarez won't be with the club for at least another two years. That prospects don't just get called up like that. Alvarez is not going to the show anytime soon. Oh, thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. Okay, so now let's get into each and one of these players. So let's start with Chris Bryant, the man of the hour, the man the Mets have literally been ridden off to land going back to the offseason. He he is what George Springer was for a bit, but then times a million with the Mets being connected to him. We all know the story with Chris Bryant in his career, but, you know, kind of a big deal. Was a stud 
in playoffs back in 2016 when they won it all. Same thing with Javi Baez, no less his teammate that are both rentals and on the on the trade market uh, are available via trade by the deadline. But no less Bryant now at the age of 29 was an all star this year, a 269 average at the time of being live here, 18 bombs, 51 RBIs, four stolen bags for 867 OPS. Positives to a guy like Chris Bryant, you get a unbelievably versatile rental third baseman that can play left, center, right, even second base and first base. The only positions you really won't see him play much are for the most most part um, shortstop and, you know, first base he can, but regardless, he plays most positions. Let's put it that way. He's been used everywhere for the Cubs this year, and he is a, has a playoff type mentality. He knows what it takes to win. And he's a rental, so there's no on-term commitment, uh, which means that it should not cost as much to land him. And there's always potential of trying to get a big trade for him uh, in the sense of you're going to extend him after the year. So, Mets fans, let me hear it in the comments right now. Would you like to see Chris Bryant, who's also done very well against lefties this year, something the Mets have had as a kryptonite, unfortunately, and matchups? Let me hear it right now. Would you like Chris Bryant to land with the Mets or not? Give me a yes or give me a no. It's as simple as that. Yes, no. Oh, we have we have a good amount of yeses and nos. I'm surprised by the amount of nos that we just got in this chat on being in favor of Chris Bryant. I have to be quite honest with you. And somebody tells me this goes directly in hand with uh, the a surge, a resurgence of bias and that potentially being a fit. The atmosphere around the Mets during the trade deadline is so different with Cohen. Oh, I know. It's it's fantastic. Um, where you got to listen to the interview on the radio. I really, uh, let's see. I really want to know how you feel about it because it made me sick to my stomach. Abe, I heard a lot of uh, quotes from Zach Scott from the radio and uh, nothing phase me whatsoever. So I'm not sure why you're sick to your stomach about Zach Scott's statements, but again, I'll listen to it on the radio as well. And just remember that Zach Scott is not going to tell you what the Mets are really doing. He's going to be, um, as what's the term I'm looking for. He's going to be as closed doors as possible. He's going to tell you one thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean the Mets are going to do that. GMs are not going to be very open. It also goes in hand when it comes to negotiation for players and stuff along those lines. Uh, so keep that in mind. But, okay, we see a lot of yes and no's on Chris Bryant. I, I think Chris Bryant is the per, close to perfect fit when it comes to their options. But now let's get on to Josh Donaldson. And, again, Josh Donaldson only means sen- makes sense to me if the Mets land Barrios. I don't think Donaldson makes nearly as much sense if you don't land a Jose Barrios or something significant along with him given his contract. Not that the Mets can handle it. But it's not like it's a, it's a desirable one. So no less, Josh, even at the age of 35, has tenacity, would bring so much personality to this club right now, has plenty of playoff experience, and even at the age of 35, a couple years left on his contract, can get the job done. There's no doubting that. I know a lot of people are not in favor of Josh Donaldson. I'm one of those people that if the Mets landed him, I would not be against it. He absolutely murdered the Mets during his time with the Braves. But again, I understand why people don't like him, and I understand why people do like him. Uh, when you look at Josh Donaldson, he's batting a cool, uh, clean 250 on the year, 16 bombs, 44 RBIs, and 838 OPS. So that being said, Josh Donaldson, would you guys be in favor or would you be against the Mets landing him, uh, especially if it's in a deal with something bigger? Padres and Rangers are discussing deals around Hosmer and Gallo. Not surprised by that whatsoever. Padres have been in on Gallo for a while. Not surprised. Let, okay, I'm, I'm really... Gallo's a great player, 
but I'm not all that concerned if the Padres landed him personally. Really not, in my in my personal opinion. Um, Padres are a race stack team. We know this. Uh, but no less. Okay, so we see some up and down. Uh, Bucks and Brios would make me scream. It would make me scream too. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would very much make me scream, undoubtedly. Um, so a lot of some mixed st- uh, thoughts here on Donaldson. Okay. So now we're going to go down the list some more. And again, guys, if you just chime in the stream, thank you so much for being here. We're under 40 likes away from 200 guys. So we're going to end the stream right around 7 p.m. Eastern time, right around the start of the Mets game today. So if we can get to 200 likes before the end, that would really, really mean a lot. And also help us get an 8K subs by August. That would also mean a lot. And trust me, guys, we're going to be streaming again long tomorrow. Anytime the Mets make a trade, we'll be streaming right away. We're going to be the biggest and most popping off stream always when it comes to Mets deals. And, of course, all day on the trade deadline, we'll be streaming during it, and we'll probably be streaming during the actual Mets game on Friday as well. So keep that in mind. Dave with the $5 Super Sticker. What's up, Ghostway? Dave, thank you so much for the $5 Super Sticker. Really, really, really appreciate that, my friend. Hope you're doing well as always, and just thank you so much for everything as always, Dave. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate you. Yep, Rangers might get Hosmer. Yep, I'm hearing that as well. Uh, Texas Rangers might be gaining Hosmer. And Gallo is a guy the Padres have been targeting for a while now. Not surprising to me at all. Now getting into a third player, which doesn't feel nearly as likely, given what you're going to have to cough up to land him. But the Mets have shown interest on him if he does, in fact, become truly available. And that is what Merrifield, the stud infielder, and can play outfield for the um, for the Kansas City Royals, as we know, has been the Ironman lead. This guy basically plays every single game. He's so healthy. Even though, even though he's getting, he's I believe he's at least thirty one or thirty two now in his career, he still steals plenty of bags. He has, the, he, I believe, he leads the league in stolen bases right now. He has one of the fastest sprint speeds too on the bags. He's been amazing. What Merrifield has a two seventy two average, eight home runs, fifty three RBIs, twenty five bombs, a seven nineteen OPS. He's a guy that really, really can jump on those bags for sure. And he does not feel nearly as likely. I will say that because he will take a haul and a half to get because he's on a beautiful contract. It is such a low cost contract. It's ridiculous, but no, what, no less what Merrifield fantastic, fantastic player. So, so underrated. And he would bring a huge element to the Mets between versatility play in infield outfield, whatever they want to do with him. And also being an iron man. And it could really help the Mets down the stretch. Just again, would cost a lot. So with saying that guys, how do you feel about what Merrifield as an option for the Mets? Are you in favor of it or, or are you not? If you're not say no, if you are say yes. I have not seen anything with Jose Ramirez and the Mets uh, since the offseason. Yeah, perfect game is broken up between the Padres and the A's. Yep, that is true. Okay. So we got people who like what Merrifield, and we got people who don't like what Merrifield. Okay. Story in gray. Yep, we've talked about that. We'll talk about that more before the stream ends. All right, guys. So now let's get into the fan favorite, what it seems by many of you guys uh, for multiple reasons. Javi Baez. If you guys didn't check out my video on Javi Baez earlier today, please make sure you do. I think it's significant. I think it's something to take into consideration on Baez's adamancy that he would love to play with Francisco Lindor. And there's potential maybe in the scenario where the Mets could land him that he would potentially take a pay cut this offseason on a new extension as long as he can stay locked up with a guy like Francisco. But Baez, we know the story went bang, 245 on the year. Huge swing, this guy. This guy is literally Ahmad Rosario if Ahmad Rosario had a gold glove. Same exact character when it comes to being the plate, though. is popping his bat, can hit those doubles, can hit those bombs. But again, swings at everything, does not get walked. Huge swing to miss rate and has plenty of speed on the bags. I see a good amount of similarities between the two outside of the drastic difference being their glove and their personalities. Buys 245, 22 bombs. If he came to the Mets, he would already tie Pete Alonso for the most home runs on the Mets currently on this roster. 65 RBIs. 
13 stolen bags and 773 OPS in his final year of his contract at just over $11 million. So, Mets fans, let me hear your thoughts. Would you be in favor or against Javi Baez landing with the Mets? And would you like to see just Javi Baez, or do you think a Zach Davies, a potentially Craig Kimbrell? Something bigger could be in the works there if you land one of those rentals from the Cubs. And Brent with a $2 donation cookie debut as a Met on Friday. I know, Brent, I'm so pumped, and I'm so happy that you were here, my man. So, again, appreciate your support. Appreciate the dono. Let's get some love in the chat for Brent. We see a lot of yeses here, though. So, again, continue to let me know your thoughts, guys. Are you in favor or against Javi Baez? Perfectly understand both sides. I really, really do. Trust me. I'm I'm neutral about it. The Mets land him. I'm so pumped. If the Mets don't, I'm okay. Especially if the Mets land, say, a Bryant or someone along those lines. And guys, we are also less than 30 likes away from 200. So to my 250, 260 plus viewers, what are you doing? Make sure to smash that like and subscribe on again. If you're enjoying the stream, please make sure to hit those buttons. And of course, just show your support. It really, really does mean a lot, guys. I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate and love this community that we have grown over the past half year plus now. Okay, we see some no's. We see a lot more yeses, it looks like. And yes, that's a great point about Sandy Olsen that I saw on Twitter that was made that the Mets did try to draft Baez in 2011, didn't happen. And Sandy Olsen tried plenty to land him via trade in both 2013 and 2014. So this would be a whole full circle for Sandy Olsen, especially to land his guy that he's been wanting literally for a decade now and Javi Baez. So keep that in mind as well. And another $2 dono, Brent. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Brent says, do you think we are still uh, targeting starting pitching? Yes, we are. Um, just not like a Max Scherzer type. We're looking more depth pieces like John Gray's, like Zach Davies, though those realm of pitchers in my mind. You like Merrifield? I do too, Dave. I really do. Okay, guys, now let's get on to what AB has said here about Cashman. The Yankees have shown interest in Mr. Trevor Story. Trevor Story, as we know, has officially been linked to the New York Mets, according to an article from The Athletic today, indicating, once again, if you haven't heard already, that uh, supposedly that, you know, that both Story and John Gray could find themselves landing in Queens, potentially. I'm not saying it will happen, just saying that it is a possible fit. And it very much is a possible fit. So Trevor Story not having a good year offensively this year. We all know that, but a lot of factors are going in. One, his contract situation, obviously. Two, just the natural cores effect. And three, I just truly believe more than anything that goes back to his contract situation. I really do. Uh, but Story, 240 average this year, 12 bombs, 46 RBIs, 17 bags, two, 733 OPS was, of course, uh, in attendance for the All-Star game, was in the home run derby, as we know, even though he fell short and has been an absolute stud defensively, one of the best gloves in all baseball and in the infield, and has really been the best shortstop defensively the past couple of years, one could argue. So let me hear your thoughts on Trevor Story, folks. Is he a guy you would like to see land in Queens, especially if it found himself not just Trevor Story, but also someone like John Gray? Let me hear yes or no. Another $2 dono. Appreciate that. For we want rentals so we don't deal on many prospects. You're 100% right, Brent. That is the route I believe the Mets want to go down. And again, thank you for that other $2 donation. I really appreciate it. I, Lindor has absolutely no ill will with Trevor Story, so I don't think that's anything to be concerned about. A lot of yeses. Okay, so, okay. See some yeses, see some pre preferences on Baez. Okay. Hot take. Zach Davies is the worst starting pitcher in baseball. That is very much a hot take. Because that's just inaccurate. <laughs> so he feels like a home run or a bus. I want bias. Okay, that's fair. Again, another donation though from Brent. Appreciate Brent with all these two dollar donos. Thank you, buddy. Really, really appreciate that. So now let's talk about the last guy, and this is the guy that is probably the least likely to happen. He is available because he did not sign a contract extension with the Twins. 
But again, you'd have to give up an absolute haul to get him. When healthy, he is an MVP caliber player in my eyes, and he will continue to be in the prime of his career. Byron Buxton, we'll just talk about him because we know that he is available in a trade. Doesn't feel likely, but again, it is possible that he could be traded somewhere at some point. And Baez was just fine for his outburst against the Reds, according to John Hammond. Kind of figured that one. But no less, Byron Buxton has been an absolute stud this year. Don't even have his numbers in front of me. But we all if you guys don't know the story, just look up Byron Buxton, man. As long as that guy's healthy, he is electric. Uh, he is just amazing. Uh, serious, unbelievably amazing. I cannot, I could gas up Byron Buxton all day long. Um, so, guys, let me know your thoughts. Would you like Byron Buxton? Whether it's realistic or not is a different story. Just in general, would you like Byron Buxton on the Mets or not? Let me hear it. Don't get your hopes up. I don't think it's going to happen, but he is one of those available players at the trade deadline. He would just cost an absolute haul. Yes, better than Almora. Yeah, yes, that is very much the truth. By a million, <laughs> he's better than Almora. Yes, a lot. Of, that's kind of what I figured on Buxton. So, we that's really the wrap up at this point, guys. I'm gonna just check on my phone moment momentarily and see where we're at when it comes to rumors right now, and then address anything and everything that is new. Um, and Zuris, that's something that is is not a surprise either. Um, he says, I don't think we're going to get anyone the media is telling us we're interested in. I think we're going to trade for guys we never thought of. We will be very surprised. I think that's that's bold, but I don't think you're completely wrong either. It, it wouldn't surprise me to be surprised if that makes sense. Uh, the Mets have been notorious since the offseason to uh, land different players than players that they were supposedly most connected to. So again, we'll see what happens, but Anything is all, all, any, anything and everything's on the table right now, just like the offseason. You know, Buxton would take this team to another level, no doubt in my mind. No, no doubt, no doubt. As long as he's healthy, there's no doubting how much of an impact he has on the bags, at the plate, in the field, everything. Yep, Aaron Loof over Justin Wilson. It, it, perfect example. Perfect example. All right, guys, just hold on one second. I'm going to just check any Twitter updates. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's been anything further besides what we talked about between Story and Gray and Zach Scott's statements on the fan. Um, and I, I think this was a great quote, too, from Zach Scott saying that when he was on the fan earlier, that we're the New York Mets. We need to be in on everybody. I absolutely love that. Okay, now here we are, right around 40 minutes left here in the stream. So from here on out, it's going to be strictly Q&A and talking more about these players, but the player breakdowns and asking yes or no is going to be different. So now let's just talk in general on what have the Mets done at this point. Okay, so they find themselves in the season. They're three and a half games above any uh, the second best team currently in the end at least. They are a team that, in my mind, I've been saying this for a while, I do believe the Mets are going to make significant moves to the point where they're not just trying to win the division, I do believe they're going to make the proper moves to try to have a deep run at this thing. They want to prove like they have done already somewhat with the market that they can compete with the Dodgers, the Padres, even the Giants, the big names really in the NL West, the Yankees and the Bronx, even though the Yanks are a different story right now. You know, they want to make sure that they are viewed as a top dog, not just now, but going forward. And I fully expect this club to make some moves that are really going to jaw drop us for a positive reason from now until the trade deadline. 4 p.m. Eastern time on July 30th. Yes, the ND poster is signed. Correct. And it was sent my way by an awesome subscriber and member on the channel, Dominic, who just retired today, no less. So shout out to my man, Dom. Really appreciate him. Colin with the $5 donation. Colin, thank you so much for the $5 dono. Let's get some dono hype in the chat for my man, Colin, as well. Appreciate you, my friend. That means a lot. I can see why you don't like rentals, but like everything else, there is, there is of course positives to that. 
right, Dave? Buxton, uh, Buxton is available. He's just going to be tall task. I know it, it's a pipe dream and a half. Can Merrifield play shortstop? I don't. I doubt it. I don't. The Mets line in Merrifield, it would not be to put him at short until Lindor's back. Mets signed Tim Tebow to a major league contract and carry team in the World Series. Who says no, Ethan? Uh, Buxton is not a free agent after this year. He still has control on his contract. He is arbitration eligible, I should say. Give me Bryant, Hendricks, and Kimbrell. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think Hendricks is going anywhere. I have to be honest with you, but I think Bryant and Kimbrell will be dealt by the deadline. Or if they land with the Mets or not, it's a different story. But I I do think that two of those three are very much going to be traded. I shall not be uh, up to <laughs> sorry called a was LGM Mets need a win tonight um with McGill on the mound. Thank you so much for the five oh one donation again. I really really appreciate you, my friend. Please make sure to give a shout out, guys. Get some donor hype in the chat for my friend Brent as well. Yes, Tyler McGill. I'm ac- I'm excited to see this guy pitch. Like he's pitched six times this season, twice already against the Braves, two solid innings both times. Um and a positive is that Ender and Ciarte was one of the reasons why he gave up a bomb in one of those two games, and Ender and Ciarte got DFA'd by the Braves. So I don't think we're seeing him tonight. So maybe that's what the Mets need, and Tyler McGill in particular, to overcome the Braves tonight. I like McGill a lot, too. He continues to blow me away. Six starts in, 2.10 your rate. Right. That's good. My videos make you happy every day. All oh, thank you so much, man. I'm glad that you enjoy the videos. I'm happy to have you here. Who do you think the Mets should give up? Uh, all all depends on the actual player they're landing. That's that's what that factors into everything for me. Absolutely everything. I'm not I'm not in favor of the Mets giving up anyone. That's why if you're going to make a trade, I need to know who the player is exactly, uh, what the team's looking for, and what is actually realistic along with the market, and that is how you properly evaluate the players you should be giving up. Dom's not on the. I don't know why Dom's not on the lineup. I, I think they're just not having him starting today again though. I think it's foolish. Don has been good against lefties this year. Very good against lefties. So, again, I, I don't I don't understand the rationale behind that one. How would I feel about Laney and Bryant and in the offseason sign by is let Conforto walk. Move Bryant. Uh, I, I love Conforto. I think Conforto is going to be fine. I think he's going to get out of the slump. Uh, and this, with the assumption he does, I don't want Conforto going out. Conforto is my favorite player. So, you really have to try hard to talk me out of not wanting the Mets to keep him. I'm aware of his struggles this year. Don't get me wrong. He is too. I think he's going to get out of it. Unfortunately, his injury really is having repercussions on him getting back in the flow of things this season. And we're just around a half hour left here in the stream, guys. So, again, thank you all so much for that been here to my 240, 250 plus viewers. Appreciate you guys. Again, like I said, plenty of times in the stream, really, really exciting times to be a Mets fan. This is by far the most anticipated, the most exciting trade deadline I've ever experienced. As awesome as the run in 2015 was, we gained Cespedes and knowing how much of an impact he immediately had for the run. We didn't have those expectations then. Now we have expectations to really make a splash, and it's going to come to fruition. So it's just a matter of who exactly are they going to land. When is it going to happen? Again, I have a gut feeling something doesn't happen today. Hope I'm proven wrong. I think trades will start up tomorrow for the Mets, and uh, the main stuff won't happen until Friday if I just had to give a strict a assumption, if you will. Hard to have any faith in this team heading a lefty. Um, I, I know. I, I agree. This team has not been hitting lefties this year. You're right. Dom Smith has been one of the few bright spots, though. And so is Alonzo. Um, Chris Bryant to the Giants to heavy trade talks broke last night. I, I don't think it's possible. It is for sure possible, but nothing is certain yet. Uh, they're showing interest, but nothing is more than just talks right now. Oh, Conforto has definitely had the best Mets catches of the year. Outside of Brandon Nimmo when he had a robbery at dead center against the Pirates, which I was out of attendance for, Conforto has had highlight reel gold glove catches all season long. That man does not get a gold glove by the season's conclusion. 
there's something really, really wrong with the MLB and how they evaluate defense because he's been nothing short of a stub there. JD is so undervalued because he's too one-dimensional. That's why. If JD had average defense, it, it would be a completely different story. But that's exactly why the Mets have viewed him the way they do because strong bat when he stays healthy. But you know they they can't even they don't even start him every day at this point because they know how much he struggles defensively and is a liability. That's on him. It sucks. It really does. If the Mets had a DH, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. But unfortunately, the MLB decided to screw the Mets in the NL this year and not give us a DH. And I know some people like the DH not being in the NL, but I'm not one of those. I think you absolutely need it. The Mets benefit so much in the short season with it, and that gave you good taste on what we can expect going forward. And it gives you another a big bat to have in the lineup. They need to get Buxton and outfield with Nemo Buxton. Conforto would be really nice. I agree. Uh, then I don't care what you do with Story, Brian, and Baez. Actually, I take Story first. Story can play second base. So can Baez. But yeah, I, I mean, I I would love Buxton. Everyone knows my stances on Buxton by now. Brent, have a good one, buddy. Again, thank you so much for the donations and for chiming in, my friend. I appreciate you. Really do. Any chance we get Baez trade deadline? If not, I'll, yeah. I think there's definitely a solid chance the Mets get Baez, especially in a pivot where they don't land Bryant for whatever reason. I definitely think that's possible. A Baez would more than likely play second base if I had a guess. Story. Probably second base. I, I think Jeff McNeil's versatility third base will make it appealing enough for the Mets. Uh, and Baez has experience at second base. Uh, story, I don't know how deep his experience is, but no less. I, I do think that it is. Um, they would probably play second. Guys, I didn't even realize till now that we passed 200 likes. Thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate you guys. And on top of that, we are just over 30 subs away now from, uh, I'm trying to think, 7 point, was it 7 point 7? No. Yeah, we're just under, just around 30 subs away from 7.7K, which is nuts. So again, we're trying to get an 8K by August. So continue to smash that like and subscribe on if you've been enjoying the streams, if you're excited for more content. It's been my two-month anniversary of being a member. Pre yes, Thomas. Let's go, baby. My man, appreciate that. How about Nimmo, Buxton, Lindor, Pete, Baez, McGill, Conforto, McCann, J.D., Dom? What, I would love it. Uh, what do you mean, how about it? I'd, I'd say sign me the hell up. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty alarming how McGill's career does resemble DeGrom's start. You're absolutely right. 100% right. McGill isn't 27, however. I'm almost certain Tyler McGill's 25, or maybe I'm wrong. He's 26. Oh, wait, no, he turned 27 today. Never mind, he is 27. He turned 27 today. Happy birthday, Tyler McGill. I forgot his birthday it was at. Don't know why I missed, but I do know uh, I want nothing to do with Story. That's perfectly fine. Again, I see positives and negatives to the Mets if they acquire him. One second, guys. I'm just looking up something quick.
All right, guys, I was just checking more on Story. If anything more can Story's been the talk of the town today, though, on social media. Because, again, the Giants have shown interest in Trevor Story now, just like they did with Chris Bryant, doing their due diligence, as they should. The Mets have now been connected to Trevor Story through the Athletic. Uh, the Yankees, of course, have shown interest. Thomas, what? What are you guys? Judge wasn't traded. What are you talking about? Did someone suggest that Judge be traded? What are you guys talking about? You guys are pranking me. It's because I had my head down for a second. I'm you. Okay, Judge was scratched. That doesn't mean he was traded, you goofs. This is stupid. <laughs> Guys need to stop. Judge is not getting traded. No way. Oh, just so you know, from Andy Martino against Martino, so take it with a grain of salt, folks. But he did just say this. Here's what the Mets and Brewer. Uh, here's what happened with the Mets and Brewers per source. Mets asked about either Brett Anderson or Eric Lauer, and Brewers were not interested in engaging in talks. A further window window in what the Mets are pursuing. Interesting. Very interesting. Again, though, I don't see the Brewers train away any one of significance for them this year with them going to win the division, more than likely. I just don't see it happening. And no, Judge did not get traded, you bunch of clowns. Just because he got scratched doesn't mean he got traded. Our Rangers show will uh, probably be happening uh, beginning of next week, given how busy we are when it comes to Mets coverage this week, uh, because we have to recap the draft with staff boy Steven and also take a look at the Mets for agent uh, Rangers for agency signings and if any trades happen, but it doesn't look like anything significant is happening today outside of lower level free agent signings. So uh, we'll probably be doing an episode again on Monday. I would say as of now, once, once all the hecticness with the Mets trade deadline is over. Oh, $5 donation from Mike. Thank you so much for that, buddy. I appreciate that. Mike says here that if the Mets get Storian Gray as a Yankees fan, I would personally lose my mind. I, I mean, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't. I really wouldn't see it. For, from a Yankee side of things, I've been looking at Story. Why wouldn't you lose your mind at that? So I, I fully respect that, Mike. But again, I appreciate the donation to OLS. Guys, let's give some love to Mike, a generous Yanks fan in here with a $5 dono. Appreciate you, buddy. I'm, I, I want to find, yeah, of course Judge isn't trade. No, there's no way in hell Judge is getting trade.
Again, guys, the only reason why I, why I have my head down is because I'm just looking on Twitter and looking at current currently what's going on just across the Mets and MLB uh, world when it comes to rumors, trying to keep you guys updated. Do I think we should get another catcher? No. Not all. Are the Mets going to make moves today, tomorrow, or Friday? I, I definitely think they're going to make moves today, tomorrow, and or Friday. That's for sure. Uh, what days they do, we'll see. But I feel confident that they will have trades made uh, by the uh, Friday, uh, the 4 p.m. Eastern deadline. That I feel pretty confident. Yes, I have seen the rumor about Story and John Gray. I have. Um, debating on if I'll, if I'll make a video out of it. Um, still has yet. I may make a video out of it after the stream. We'll, we'll see what happens, but nothing is certain yet. We'll see. We'll see. Cause the Mets have also been in talks with the Brewers too. So again, it's trade deadline season, folks. You're going to see me. I'm not even going to have videos for every single player. The Mets have shown interest in like I normally do because of just how much is building up in such a short period of time. Like John Gray and Zach Davies, I did not make individual videos for, but the Mets have shown interest in the interest in them. If you guys have, don't know that, Ray. Right. I see Scherzer. Uh, I see Scherzer going to the NL West for sure. Jose, is that something that you would like? Is that what you're saying, Dom from Merrifield? Just got an eight dollar tip on a delivery four minutes away. That's always a positive math. You get that bread. The Yankees are super confusing. Why would they want Story instead of an outfielder, uh, and and even potentially have Story go in the outfield too? Like I've seen reports that it, Yank. I mean, look, Yank. I don't know what the Yanks are doing, but luckily it's not a concern to me. Trades aren't coming until three fifty three on Friday, Alderson style. Sounds that that very well could be the case, <laughs> Brendan. It'll drive us nuts, but again, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Really, wouldn't. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it. Okay, so Zach Scott did say uh, for Chris Bryant specifically um, for the fan that uh, Chris Bryant is a really good player. And we have to be, uh, let's see here. Chris Bryant is a really good player, and we have to be in on good players. We're the New York Mets. We have to be in on anyone who can make an impact. Very GM-like answer from Zach Scott. Sounds about right. I will say, though, Josh Donaldson, while I don't see it happening, I don't think he would be a cancer whatsoever. I think he would actually help uplift the clubhouse, to be quite honest with you. He has a really, really good personality for his team, his personal team. He, he's a menace to go up against, but he very much benefits with his club. Yankees has been traded to the Padres for Eric Hosmer. Um, executives are shocked the Padres would trade such a stable first baseman for a player who's injured so much. Yes, Jay Boogie. I'm sure that's something that you would dream, right? Let's not do fake news in the chat, though. Feels like the Mets uh, put most other proposals in. Let's see here. In and are waiting for players to decide. Probably why other names come up. Uh, I, not so much players as teams, because players don't have much in, much say if they're being dealt unless they have a, a no-move clause where they can put in like 10 teams that they don't want to be dealt to. I appreciate you, Michael, for the kind words. That means a lot, my friend. Best fans in the world, indeed. John Gray and Steven Matz aren't the same pitcher. John Gray has a 3.67 year array this year. And while, don't get me wrong, he's nothing crazy, he would add rotation depth for you. Will they even make a trade? Not, not trade. How many trades, John? To, to, to even question if the Mets will make trades or not. Is, is the notion of someone that has not been following the Mets this year. Uh, both have different styles of pitching, too. Uh, well, of course, yeah. Southpaw, righty, just to name the basis of it. Gray's numbers on the road are actually not as good as his home numbers this year. He has, I believe, he has a 4.4 ERA, if my memory's not mistaken, on the road versus home. He has a three-point something. Uh, last year he's had very weird road and away splits. They've been up and down, up and down throughout his career. Uh, sometimes it benefits being in cores and sometimes it does benefit being in cores. So this year he's had more success at course surprisingly.
Do I think the Mets uh, can land a trifecta with Bryant, Bias, Kimbrel? Uh, no, no, no chance in hell they land all three. S- there's there is some chance they land Kimbrel and one of the two, but there is literally zero chance in hell they land those three. No way. I think black jerseys should be a staple. Oh, I, I love the black jerseys. Yeah, I wouldn't mind them being the Mets' normal uniforms. I love them so much. They should stay. That's my personal opinion, though. I just I love black jerseys as they are. So connecting with the Mets, that's why we got the hat on. Yeah, it's time. I love, 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 love Mets black jerseys. So nice. So nice. And Cookie is pitching on Friday. Well, I think the Mets could realistically get, I think the Mets can realistically get, Honestly, I, I realistically believe they can get one of Story, Baez, or Bryant from position player standpoint. And I think starting pitching wise, uh, we're looming more in the realm of uh, John Gray, uh, Zach Davies, um, more along those lines, not a Max Scherzer or a Jose Barrios. I like the A6 racing stripes too, those are really clean. Uh, don't want story to be on. I, I know people were up and down about story. I understand. I, I, there's still plenty of upside if you get him. Trust me. What would the Mets give up? All depends on the exact deal. It's very hard. To, it's very hard to gather what kind of players they'd be giving up it because it varies. If you're just getting one player, that's a rental or if you're doing a blockbuster for multiple players from a team that, that directly goes in hand with what you're coughing up and how many assets you're giving up for that matter. Chris McGee with the membership. Thank you so much for that, Chris. I appreciate you. Guys, shout out my man, Chris. Let's get some love in the chat for Chris for becoming a new member on the channel. Appreciate you, my man. It really does mean a lot. Happy to have you here. Am I doing a stream for tonight's game? No, I'm streaming up until tonight's game, as a matter of fact. Right up until 7 p.m. Eastern time. In-game live streams are not happening on the channel until the trade deadline has concluded, folks, because this stuff it needs to be separate from the games right now, if you ask me. Um, so once the deadlines, we may very well stream Friday night's game after the deadline and after streaming for like five hours, as long as I'm not too shot and I can handle it, then we'll do like literally an entire day stream on the channel on Friday. So to be continued there, and we will be back streaming on the channel tomorrow as well. A lot of exciting stuff. What other sports teams do I like? I'm a Steelers fans for fan for football, uh, Rangers fan for hockey and, um, Try to think if I'm thinking for getting on anything else. I don't mind the Giants or the Jets for football, though. I'm I'm neutral with both of them, but Steelers are just my favorite team. Rangers for hockey, um, New York Knicks for basketball, uh, Juventus for uh, soccer, and that's really about it. And Duke for college basketball. But I'm not a bandwagon. I assure you, I've been following them since the fifth grade because I was I picked that their the team name randomly out of a hat for an assignment in fifth grade and. Whoever's team won the March Madness that year got to pick what we did for like the last week of school. So I watched their games religiously and I've been a fan ever since. So, cause I know normally you think Duke and you think of course bandwagons, but I'm, I'm not one of them. <laughs> Just saw a post Marlins offer Marte the Yankees 11, number 11 prospect and they, and they declined. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I think Mauricio would be a good training piece. Yes, I think Mauricio would be a fantastic training piece in the right scenario. I'm not in favor of trading Mauricio just for a rental. I think Mauricio makes sense to be traded for something significant like a blockbuster deal where there's multiple assets and you're acquiring at least one guy that can further block Mauricio's future other than Lindor, of course, who already has shortstop locked down for the next decade. I wish I would have found this earlier. Well, I'm happy to have you here, Chris, no less. I really, really appreciate you again, my friend. I appreciate all my viewers, all you guys. Thank you so much for smashing that like and subscribe button in advance. And just know that I'm really, really excited for tomorrow's stream and hopefully trades are happening real soon. So 
Again, guys, I'm not sure if any vi more videos will come today. Um, tomorrow, there may be videos other than streams. It all goes on the reporting if I feel it's worthy of making a separate video on. But no less, uh, just thank you so much for the continued support. We have 10 more minutes really in the live stream, guys. So continue to ask away on questions. I don't want uh, Jose Brios to get traded the Mets. I want him to stay. I mean, Brios feels uh, a lot more unlikely to actually go to the Mets than, uh, than just a week or two ago. Uh, things have changed a little bit, according to reports. So I wouldn't get too worried that Brios goes to the Mets just yet, but I do think there's a strong chance Brios gets traded regardless of where he lands uh, from now until the deadline on Friday. Do I think Diaz can hold it down if we make it? See, that's a that's a great question. I think Diaz has the stuff to be to continue to dominate closing wise. Um, but a part of me feels like the Mets make may like further security, which is why they have reportedly shown interest in Kimbrel. I think Diaz can get it done in playoff time, but I understand that he needs to prove it too, and, and that's important. You know, uh, Mets have had been notorious for having uh, stud pitchers in the in, in previous years where they had really strong regular seasons, but just choked it big time come playoff time. And you need that, those guys that can help you uh, take that hurdle, get that next step to really dominate in the most pivotal games for the Mets in the season. Uh, pardon me, playoffs, not season. So better than I cough, says Dave. Uh, would I like to see Charlie Morin on the Mets? Uh, Charlie Morin's dominated the Mets this year, so that's an upside, but I don't see the Braves trading Morin. I think the fact that the Braves have had a solid series to the Mets at this point means they won't be full sellers at the deadline. Um, I think it's going to come back to bite them in the end because I don't think the Braves are going anywhere this year at this point. But again, anything's possible. I don't think Charlie Morton will be traded, however. I have a lot of players I think are the best fit for the Mets, but I think Chris Bryant really checks off all boxes for them when you have versatility, stability at third base, willingness to play the outfield, and even other parts of the infield. You can do whatever the hell you want with him, and he's going to be a, a, pr a pretty strong glove versus other options the Mets have had this year, especially at third base. Let's be real. Um, even if he's not necessarily a go glover, trust me, he gets the job done, has plenty of rage with that six foot five frame, he smashes lefties. The Mets suck against lefties this year. Horrendous. Um, a lot of upsides to Chris Bryant. Um, and I think I think he is uh, one of the best fits for the Mets at this year's deadline. Matthew, oh, I just saw your thing about the address. Yeah, Matt, I have a um, I should have in the description down below my PO box in case you want to send anything my way. Thank you in advance if you do. I appreciate that. People send me Met stuff all the time, and I I, I always am beyond appreciated and always kind of jaw dropped on the things you guys send. So thank you for everything. Yeah, exactly, Dominic. Again, a lot of upsides of Brian. Same thing with others. Don't get me wrong. Brian is the only guy that has upside if the Mets land. Um, but Brian just feels the most right outside of them being connected with him. He just, he really checks off in my mind, the most boxes for what the Mets are looking to address uh, down the stretch here in the playoffs. I've always been a Mets fan. Yep. Keith Hernandez alarm clock. That was hysterical. That was that was by far the bright spot of the broadcast yesterday. That's for sure. I think Brian is going to... I mean, Brian's been connected to the Giants as of late. It's possible. But again, uh, the Giants aren't, for sure, aren't the front runner right now. There's nothing to indicate that. Giants have just been showing interest. Same way that they've been showing interest in Trevor Story now because they would like to land at least one of them, rightfully so, for a club trying to have a deep run, exceeded expectations, first in the division with the Dodgers and the Padres in the same division as them. They want more fuel to the fire. The only way to do that is to add significant bats and really guys just help out round out your lineup. Can't blame them for what they're doing whatsoever. Who, if we had, would you give up in a trade on our starting lineup? 
Um, on our starting lineup, who I personally would give up, I think especially if you're going to address third base, I'm not against getting rid of JD. I don't want I don't want him to be traded, but I, I'm I would be neutral if he was, knowing the reason as to why. Uh, David Pearson as well as a guy that I think could be susceptible of being dealt in a bigger trade potentially for starting pitching depth with plenty of years of control and a contract for the young Southpaw. Um, those are two guys that stand out to me. Um, everyone, I, I really don't want anyone to be traded, but if you're asking me for guys I think are fairly realistic, those are two that have always stood out to me. And guys, we have right around five minutes left here in the stream. I want to thank everyone thoroughly that have chimed in this entire time. We've had between two and 300 viewers this entire one. It's been an awesome stream. Thoroughly appreciate you all so much. Please make sure to smash that like and subscribe on. Appreciate the questions. I'm excited again. We will be, be back streaming on the channel again tomorrow, baby. You know how this works. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that just as much as I am. We'll take a couple more questions, though, and then once 7 p.m. hits, I'm going to get out of here so I can watch the game. And no, I will not be streaming the game tonight. I will, I'm will. i not streaming any games, doing in-game live streams until after the trade deadline has concluded. So just keep that in mind. Will we get buys in free agency? It's possible. It, it, me, they might get them at the deadline. So um, I think that depending on what they trade for by the deadline, uh, could go in hand with them game buys or not, obviously. Happy to have you here, Dave. Appreciate the kind words, my friend. Conforto does need get us out of his slump. As a Conforto diehard fan, you're preaching the choir. What's up, Shy? How are you, my friend? Happy to have you here. You have a feeling we'll get Baez and Davies? Okay. Here, hold on one second, guys. My apologies, guys. My dog is just barking her head off, but it really doesn't matter because we're ending the stream in like three minutes. So I'll just I'll just leave it be. <laughs> Are we getting rid of uh uh Eikhoff was DFA today, Victor, to answer your question. <laughs> oh Robert, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate you, buddy. That really does mean a lot. Thank you. I'm again I'm happy to have you here and everyone. Steven, I, I understand you if you can't take negativity from Mets fans. Trust me, it takes a lot, it takes a big tolerance on my part to deal with it every day um, when it's not warranted, especially, which is more th more often than not the case. I believe in our team too. I really do. I, I trust in Zach Scott, uh, Sandy, everyone, Steve Cohen, Uncle Stevie, baby. I, I really trust in them all, and I think that they are going to make the right moves for the Mets, not just now but going forward. So are the, uh, are the prospects the Mets are giving up? Um, so it all depends on the deal. Again, all depends on the deal to get specific on prospects. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, prospects for just a rental versus a trade with multiple pieces, it can vary. It really can. You think it's possible we get Bias, Kimberl, and Buxton? Buxton's my pipe dream. I, I don't see it happening, but God, I would love that. Um, I think that would be a, a slam dunk of a trade deadline if they somehow some way got Baez, Kimbrel, and Buxton. How do we feel about Cookie on Friday? I'm pretty excited about Cookie on Friday. I don't know about you. Where do I think? I don't know where Baez would be in the lineup, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's it's hard it's hard to grasp that right now, especially with how the Mets would be performing offensively. 
um, at the point of them landing Baez. So I'm gonna gonna take a rain check on that before I really give an answer. I don't know right now. Baez and Kimbrel from Mauricio. I think that you can make a trade for Baez and Kimbrel without Mauricio, but again, uh, if you if you can, don't trade Mauricio. But if that is really what it takes, I wouldn't be completely against it, especially with Kimbrel. He's not a free agent, so there's going to be more cost with him. But Baez, a guy, especially if you resign him, there's a, there's even more um, of a notion that there's no room for Mauricio with this club d- down the road, not just that shortstop with Lindor, but then most likely at second base with Baez if he's extended. If, if the Mets somehow miss postseason, I think I think Rojas's times and Queens are done. But I think Rojas is really putting himself in a good spot to stay with the team for a bit. Um, I, I will say that. I know that people are up and down by Rojas. I've been up and down on him this year too, but he has he has really helped this club in a lot of ways, especially through adversity, and he deserves the credit, rightfully so. He's not perfect. No, no manager's perfect, but he has gotten the job done in, in some crucial times for the Mets when they need it. As long as they make playoffs and hopefully have a deep run, I, I, I for certain expect him to get a contract extension. But with that being said, though, guys, that's going to conclude this stream of two and a half hours or so. So I want to say thank you again all so much to everyone that chimed in to my just under 200 viewers now, everyone that stayed put. Just know that I thoroughly appreciate you all so much. I had a fantastic time as we broke down everything there is to know about the Mets and their current prospects. So just know that we will be back streaming on the channel tomorrow, probably around the same time. The only exception is that a trade happens before that, and we go live earlier. We talk about that trade, or if it goes later, because say the Mets game gets postponed, we find out early in the day, and that way I can push the stream to more in the evening, which is something I wouldn't be um, against doing. So no less, a lot of great content, maybe some videos we'll see, depending on the reports that come out for the Mets over the next 24 hours. But I hope you all have a great rest of your day, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the donations and new memberships, subscriptions likes all that stuff whether you're watching this live now or on replay i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day so of course let's go mets baby yeah i believe trust me trust me when i say trades are coming see you guys